Angela, it's Kathy. You're not muted. <laughs> That's what my house sounds like. And we're ready whenever you'd like to begin. There's, there's no script. This is an informal, it's not a formal meeting, just a budget work session. Oh, I can bring you a mic. Oh, Kathy, you almost like we're in a cartoon with. Okay. Um, we can get started if you're, if everyone's ready. Mm -hmm. So uh, at Monday night's council meeting, uh, the council suggested that we would start our work sessions um, with a discussion of revenue. And um, uh, we can talk about city services, general city services, as well as the police department. Um, I did want to, I think starting with revenue is great. So I did send council an email earlier today, kind of going through some of the high points of revenue. And I also sent, uh, around a worksheet that I believe members of the public should have access to as well as staff that highlights the different um, areas of revenue, if you will, and whether they're fixed or <coughs> estimated by staff. Um, so first and foremost, so I think it's important to start with the uh, tax rate because on Monday, the council did not <coughs> approve a public hearing to override the tax cap. And so if it is the city council's intention not to increase property taxes over the 2%, um, then the budget that has been preliminarily adopted is irrelevant because it has a tax increase proposed of 12%. So we immediately it need to- Right, it's just the preliminary, it is the preliminary budget, but it is the fallback budget should council not come to another agreement. And the problem with that budget is going to be that it already exceeds the tax cap. So we really need to have a conversation with council about where you are uh, in terms of an appetite for increasing taxes or not, so that we can have a basis for budget discussions. What's the maximum we can increase tax the tax rate? I believe it's 15% that would keep us in line with our constitutional tax limit. Mm -hmm. And every uh, every 1% is about $90,000, if I'm not mistaken. Angela S. answered that question for me a couple months ago. Yeah, no. and, and we did provide 10 you. 10% 625. We provided you with a breakdown of uh, 0, 5, 10, 12, and 15% and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... To start that conversation off, I don't mind going to the 15 and knowing that uh, this when this GAR associates comes through and uh, does the reassessment that should the whole purpose of that, of course, is not only to get everybody on some sort of a, an equal footing, but to move us away from the constitutional tax limit if we can. So I, I'm game to up at 3 percent. And I think we should considering the mess that's been created. So. Just my thoughts. No, as far as I'm concerned, the mess that was created was created long ago. No, no, well, you guys, you, you guys created don't the mess. Start. So, well, hey, I'm just saying, it's your mess. This is your. You want, budget. you want to get it done, or you it's want to argue? Nonsense. Well, quite frankly, it's it's Let's all it's it. all of our mess to share. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. so, really, yeah. arguing about it at this point isn't going to get us yeah. any further ahead. That's fine. Fifteen. I don't want either. At all. And Which has been constant since this council's been in place. Initially, initially you said fifteen percent, then you said three percent. Well, well, three from the twelve. Three from the twelve. Because it's not this, well, it's not twelve so because it's, you don't have a tax cap. You, it didn't go, so you and don't. Still, have it. oh, I know. So, yes. so the only reason to vote against that is be, is with the intent to bankrupt the city. 
and do it quick and turn us into a village just like you guys want to do. Do away with the fire department. Do away with that. I don't. I don't so, hear that coming out of my mouth, Dan. Please don't speak for me. Are led us this through. Really? Six, seven year. Contract. I think we're just fine without you. Yeah. Six, seven year. All, <laughs> I, I think that all the dirty yeah. little deeds done between November 2019 when we took office January 1st. All the dirty little deeds brought us here. No, I, 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 I can't hear no. anybody. Mayor Kelly, Kelly, just speak into the microphone, so, uh, please. <laughs> Um, I think yeah. Councilor Reesh has something to say. I think it's safe yeah. to assume that given the vote that we took that a 2% uh, in, in taxes is what we will, you should be looking at right now. That that may change, but let's, let's use that for a number right now after we get through all these budgets and everything that uh, see where we stand. Is that correct? Yes. No. no. Is there a deadline on passing that resolution? No. Well, so we, by law, have to adopt a budget by December 20th. Mm -hmm. And if the council changes their mind on wanting to exceed the task cap by any amount, you will have had to have called for a public hearing. So if there's a thought on council's mind that you might want to, or you might want to have the option to, then you have to have the public hearing. So if we get to December 20th and you say, okay, fine, we're going to increase it 5%, that is above the tax cap mm -hmm. and you will not have been able to have a public hearing. Yeah, you can put that on the next agenda. I understand that that's fine. And I'll vote for it. But with the understanding that right now we're working through the budget, <laughs> I think it's the majority's goal right. that we're, we're trying to only increase taxes below the uh, 2% limit. Well, let's, fine. Then, then let's, let's, until we do that, let's change it from the 12 to the 2. Because if not, the 20th, you get stuck with it. And so that would mean the entire budget has to be completely reworked and this no, session for nothing. I don't think so either. So we will need to look at um, a significant reduction of approximately $355,000 in revenue uh, from what was projected in the preliminary budget. So if you want to change that number to four million, you want to change that number to four million six thirty six two ninety two. I think there's a consensus to do that, which is two percent. You want to vote on that? Have a consensus vote. Then you can raise your hand if you're in favor of it. Yeah. Okay. I, I I can't hear anything. We just voted to um, reduce the revenue from real property taxes down to 2%, Mike, which is 4,636,629. That's the first line in the revenue line. We Say just the number a, again, 4 million what? 636,629. That, that, that may change us. Let's, let's That's work the 2%? All these budgets. Yep. Still not gonna be sufficient, but. So, what do we vote? I mean, we're, we're, this, this is a work session. There's no votes here. No, we just did it by consensus to give Andrea direction. That's what she wants. In order to be able to do the tax levy. So that when we're but, done, when we're done with each budget session, she can come back and tell us where we stand as we work through the budget. So the next. Um, significant revenue source in the budget is use of general fund money. Um, this budget calls for using $750,000 from the general fund. Your email today said that um, there's still about 300,000 remaining that could be applied and, and, and be at 2.2 million in fund balance next year, estimated. So maintaining a minimum fund balance of 2.2 million, there is approximately $379,000 left in the fund balance. All right, let's, let's just keep that in mind. You know, hopefully that's a lot of fund balance, but we can keep that in mind anyways. I guess I'm just interested, is council willing to use that much general fund 
at, at this point in time. At least 750,000? 750. Yeah. I mean, that's what you propose. And I don't think anybody wants to change it. Yes. Um, also, uh, discretionary in the revenue is the use of $90,000 from unallocated ARPA funding. So at this point in time, we have funded all of the priority heating appliances and handicap accessibility applications that identify those as uh, their, their priority for low and moderate income households. And um, we're working through finalizing those and there is a balance of about 90,000 that has been uncommitted. And there are in excess of 300 applications remaining that we haven't satisfied and we won't be able to um, so council will then have to decide how to go through that and allocate the 90,000 or use it in this budget so you're, you're saying that we can use it as revenue to fund operations yes. or, or we can disperse it correct I I think we need it for revenue if it is the council's desire to keep this in as a revenue source, we will issue uh, letters to those applicants tomorrow morning. They are ready to go. Didn't we, didn't we use previous ARPA monies to balance last year's budget? We did, and if you want detail on that, uh, Angela can provide that to you. I remember it being about almost 500K, if I remember correctly. After the ninety thousand, I'm so, I'm sorry, Andy. So after the ninety thousand, we have three hundred thousand that's unallocated. No, this is the this ninety thousand is what remains unencumbered in the homeowner program. Uh, there was a commitment of two hundred and sixty-one thousand. I can tell you the exact number if you want to know, but um, no, I got you. Two hundred and sixty-one six. And 169 and change has been applied to okay. priority needs. So that would be a one-time revenue of 90,000. Correct. Okay, so it's not recurring. Yeah, I, I think we need that for revenue at this point in time. Do we have a consensus on that? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the letters will, for anybody that is not currently working through those um, priority projects will receive their letters probably by the end of the week or over the weekend. It's not the best of news, but we were able to help many. Um, and so we will reallocate the remaining 90,000 into this budget as it, as it is and has been, we'll keep it in. <clears throat> Um, additionally, this budget calls for 751,000 uh, from the water and sewer funds. This is a decrease from 2022. Uh, we have been decreasing that over time as we really tighten up the direct um, staff hours attributed to work associated with water and sewer. So this is what we are projecting for 2023. I just want to make sure council is. So that's uh, 155,000 less than 2020, 174,897 less than 2020. And, you know, we take money out of those funds because they have them. I mean, people are paying water, sewer, and taxes. It all comes out of the same pocket. And, you know, if there's a surplus, then. So I'm not sure what the strategy was. I guess it was to beef those funds up, but I would propose going back to the 2020 levels. So I would propose increasing that line by 330,000 back to 2020 levels. I, I disagree. We've been robbing, for, you know, through separate funds. We're taking just the three quarters of a million dollars. I don't think we should raise it up to over a million when it's proposed that we raise sewer taxes by 25%. Four percent of and well and and, and uh, we need to go through those budgets too, but um, um, it's not right. People are paying twice, and then and besides that, they are they are paying twice though. I don't. Well, they, they are. They're, 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 we're taking this is for, for service for water and sewer to be provided. 
and we're taking it to the general fund wrongfully. And but bad not taking three quarters of a million dollars. Maybe maybe those fees are too high and that's why there's a surplus. But by all rights, um, you know, that's those those services were separated from the general fund for valid reasons, but it still comes out of the, the taxpayer's pocket. So there's nothing wrong with charging employees salaries to those to those funds. And I, I think that we are. yeah and we I we are. It's in the general fund. Yeah. We're taking this money in excess. And and hmm. the, the, the surpluses will be consumed. I hope we can bring that sewer rate down below twenty five percent. Uh, but that that's gonna be uh surplus is gonna be consumed by the one point four million dollar or one point one million dollar, whatever it is, paying for every year for thirty years. That's budgeted. That's part of the account. You know? So that we so, we need to go through that budget. But right now we need revenue to keep the tax rate down and you know reduce the the pain of uh, you know reductions in in employees. From my perspective, you're anyways. keeping the tax rate down, but you're raising the sewer and water no, rates. I don't think so. <laughs> You're not going to raise them. Well, well, we need to go through those budgets, so it's it's difficult because I mean, if you you know, it's difficult because I, I've read the water and sewer budgets. I know what I'm going to do. Maybe other people haven't, but we need to go through those budgets yet. And I think you can take three hundred thirty thousand out of those. The, the only good thing about taking a little bit more money out of the out of this fund is, regardless of your nonprofit, whether you pay taxes, property tax, you don't pay it, you paid it. And it's in that fund. So the state and, of New York and and, and the um, the United employees Helpers, that are doing the work, the dioceses, they're, they're all, not paying for that. They're all reducing. And this is the only way to get them to pay for a little bit. Uh, our, our taxpayers' bills. So, so that's you know, Sarah Purdy wrote in the 2016 budget how how they, the water and sewer funds had been robbed. All this money had been taken from them, and then those facilities which. My companies worked in those back then, and uh, I mean, they were in total disrepair. So much money was taken that no money was put into this. We just spent thirty or forty million and now dollars. Now we have to make a payment. Right, and that's 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 in the budget. That's budgeted and, for. And, and it was figured at a twenty-five percent increase to do that. Well, I mean, we're taking three quarters wrongfully taking three quarters of a million dollars. I don't agree with taking a, a million dollars. So we need a consensus of four, and you need revenue to fund positions. So that's so that's my understanding that this uh, this money that we're taking covers labor that's used. To, uh, Andrea made mention that you know on Monday night's meeting we spoke of the the potential federal grant process, and Andrea touched upon that. And to to echo, I think some of John's sentiments here. <clears throat> excuse me, you know, showing sometimes too much money in certain funds. When you're applying for grants, uh, doesn't look attractive in that aspect, and and uh, you know, I, I, ultimately at the end of the day, I'm in favor of it, John. So. Our water fund, our, our uh, water filtration plant needs may need as much as thirty million dollars put into it. That's so what happens when you, that fund That's what happens when right, you bring so do we have a consensus you bring to do engineers and like, they dream up projects. I agree with John. I, okay, me too. Let's go on to the next slide. How much was it again? Three what? Three hundred and thirty thousand. You you just want to go back to two thousand and twenty levels that we said. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's, it's three hundred and thirty thousand. Adding to that. Hmm? Adding to what was in there. Mm -hmm. Adding to what you had already proposed, yes. <laughs> from the water fund, right? Well, it's one fifty five from the water fund. It's one hundred and seventy four. 170, call it 175 from the sewer fund. Thank you. Just the shell game. Uh, Andrew, may I ask a question real quick? Sure. Yeah. John, I would, uh, Councilor Reich, sorry, I was just trying to clarify where you were seeing the million dollars that was transferred in its entirety, um, what, what the source of that number was. Um, I think there were lines in the water and the sewer budgets that I had led and I read and I was looking at uh, each of the budgets 
independently and it said interfund transfer, that's where I got the numbers from. But even if I'm not accurate, that's still my position. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to, um, you know, listen to your feedback, Angela, if you have a concern. I do. Um, on the the prior year, 2020, 2020 level, one of the highest levels, um, that interfund revenue was $885,000 approximately. So we are we have a decrease of 130,000. So there's just a material difference between 130 and $300,000. I, I still think the funds can, can handle that. Would you disagree? Uh, the sewer fund, I do disagree with um, that it can handle that. In the sewer fund budget, we are already appropriating over a million point two use of fund balance. Some of that is for a capital project, a big portion of that, another portion of that is for the long-term control plan. Outside of those two numbers, the rest of that was used to balance the budget. So if we take another $100,000 plus out of the sewer fund, we either have a decision to make there of A, raise sewer funds rates higher than 25%, or to continue to use the fund balance um, of that account. I will review the is, the... is the third option to find alternative sources of funding for capital projects? Always. That's a... That's a always well, that's, on the table. that's the challenge. I mean, we haven't gotten to that account yet, but um, yeah, there are significant money for capital projects. And uh, so I, I think that those need to be addressed either through grants um or um i mean not doing them i i, I don't know specifically well we may bond for it which would you know reduce the the use of fund balance out of you're those take a bond when you already have a 1.2 million dollar payment Yeah, we're only at 14% of our um, of our actual ability to borrow, Mike. Uh, so yeah, well, we might have to do that in how order are you to pay it back when we're already short on money. You know. Well, let's work you through just, the let's work through the budget. And we'll figure it out. Just a show game. Okay. 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 Or do we have to have a consensus for that money? Mm -hmm. Well, Angela, did you have anything else to add? I know we've talked quite a bit about use of water and sewer funds in our staff meetings, um, and a lot of thought was put into getting to uh, the 751. So did you have any other thoughts about increasing that before we move on? No, no, thank you. I just want to make sure we're clear on the increase rate. They're going to go to the 2020 limit of about 885,000, or we're going to exceed the 2020 limit um, to the upwards of a million dollars as the interfund transfer. So we, we just need to settle on which limit we're going to hit. We already decided that. Did we, did we still have consensus after that information or what? Yes. Yeah. I don't mind going to the 885. All I'm saying is that if you don't do something with revenue, you're the one that's going to be taking the jobs away. So, I mean, oh, this, no. this is this is the whole thing right here, Dan. I mean, so this is the big night. So, so this, this, this money, is, as John put it a few minutes ago, it pays for the work of uh, our DPW that, that works down down at, at these plants, right? No, it offsets many positions in addition to staff at DPW, um, including the city manager's position, which is paid a third, a third, a third. Right. Um, there's uh, offset in the engineering line and the planning line and code enforcement, Right. city clerk, comptroller. So if you it's really beyond DPW, right? do anything relating to water and sewer, we try to calculate what that amounts to, and there's an offset in each of those budget pages. 
So my question is, is that 751 comparison to the offset? Is it about right? We believe it to be accurate. Because I know the state came in before and said we want it to be accurate, right? Or as close as We've we been can. working towards making it accurate till about from about 2019 when it was brought up in the Financial Restructuring Board report. Okay. I had a discussion with Andrea, I mean, about, you know, positions, other positions that could be applied. Um, I think a portion of the firefighters salaries could be applied to it. They they use the water obviously to put fires out. They flush hydrants. Um, so I don't see anything wrong with that. So I don't think we're in a in any kind of a risky area with that. I believe this uh, taking too much from the water and sewer funds is uh, in part affected our Moody's rating also. I've, I've never read that in a Moody's rating. No. Yeah. It, uh, so. Yeah. So I'll go with you on this giant. Right. So if you take so you go back to the two percent property increase back to that and then or, and then you go you just set off your real property budget you go to the general fund you had the three hundred and thirty k so we're gonna we're about one hundred and twenty five thousand short of where we were with the property increase. Yeah, we have. We have um, ninety thousand. We have a lot more to go through. No, I know. I'm just, yeah. I'm just yeah. doing a rolling tally to where we could be at. All right, I'm with you, John. To make sure we're all on the same page. So when you say that, are we talking about going to eight eighty five or a million? Because I've heard both, and I guess I'm not clear. I'm sorry. We're adding three thirty to yeah, that but... line. Okay. So you're going to be going a million eighty one. Yep, one million eighty one seven fifty one. Yep. And if we work through this same way with the property tax, you know, maybe it'll change at the fourth meeting or the final meeting. I don't know, but I'm just trying to give some directions and see where we stand at the end of things. I think the most important thing is we should be trying to lower that number at the sewer fund at least. You know, so maybe the lion should have that come out of the water. But we can we can let Angela give us some options on that. So don't forget the the water filtration plant is Right. Is in major decay. It's not though. It, 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 I went through the whole thing. I, I walked through all the buildings and talked to the men there, and, and they, they they showed me and that the issue that Dank dreamt up was something to deal with the, the sand pits and building a whole new building over it, so there wasn't any type of occupational hazard. This is what the engineers and and people at Dank dream up to spend our money. So if you want to go have burial, a good can, but I won't. That's go burial. All right, let's move on, guys. It's not here at midnight. So the next section is estimated revenues. Um, the first one is sales tax. So uh, you have been provided with the basis for which uh, this calculation has been made, and the projection is based off of this is an eight percent increase over 2022 um, at two point. Five million. I, uh, I think I think it's still. Low. I, I think you could get a hundred or maybe even hundred and fifty more. I I think you could project because um, we have no idea, and I don't think anyone else does right now, and we're not going to know until the state actually dives into this and figures out who's reporting correctly and who's not. Um, because there's there's no checks and balances right now. We we need them to audit. We need to to know if Lowe's is our money's not going more a lot to pot stamps and being reported um right now we have no idea and i i get the first three months that we were still on the counties but i it, it would just be really terrible that if we ended up having the state come in and look at it and come back and say you know yeah you know, you're owed another four hundred thousand dollars but we let uh, you know a lot of more people go that didn't need to go and i'll go with you another hundred on that i just I, I I think it, it would be a safe bet, I because I, I mean For all what we're doing is projecting we're we're making the best projections we can make based on the information and we don't have any information. But I just go 100 with you on that. I think that's fair. Well, we're climbing. I'm fine with that. What are you talking about? You're talking about sales and 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 uh, sales and use tax now? Yeah. Just sales tax instead of 2.5 million, 2.6. I'm going to bring it to three, like we did last year. You, you're suggesting that? 
you suggested it, I'll, I'll go with you. Yeah, me too. I think you got to get more. That's if that's what you think. I, you I, know, it's, it's your I, call. You know, I, let me let me let me pump the brakes for a minute. Here. I'm uh, fine with I'm fine with halfway two hundred thousand. I think uh, two hundred thousand. I think Angela's probably an increase. Oh, oh, an increase. increase. Probably throwing her arms up right now. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, it, it, I mean, we, it, it'll be interesting to see what January to, 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 to April 1 looks like, you know, like Steve said, so I, you know, I don't know. There's, a, there's, a, and even there's a lot of people that are the smaller businesses that they report quarterly. You're not, you don't even know three months until the, the to the fourth month what they filed. Um, so your, your sheets aren't right anyway. And I mean. Coming up, it's going to be probably, I would hope, in 2022, the next few months will be somewhat plentiful with the holidays that whatever people have got left for it that's taken, um, I think they'll spend it. And, you know, I, I, yeah, if you end up with a deficit, it's going to come out of fund balance anyways. And we do have that cushion. 200? 200 is fine. That's okay. That's right. fine with me. 2.7? I'm good. Two point two, yeah, two point seven. <laughs> and um, I, I'd like to see the manager or the comptroller send a, a letter this week to the comptroller requesting. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't say an audit, um, a review of our payments, um, given how low that they've been and that they should evaluate them based on street addresses to verify that, you know, are our sales tax that poor um, or is there, is there an issue? And I think a letter needs formally needs to go out from the city to the comptroller asking for that review and so e expressing our concern. Right. Did Steve do that? Because we asked them to take a look at some things. Well, I don't think we ever sent a formal. I believe the comp comptroller was in the office on the 24th of October. Am I correct? Well, there were two representatives from the New York State Comptroller's office here in the city, yes. I, I, I think. And they retrieved, from what I understand, some financial documents. A good bevy of them. Well, what did they retrieve? For for a risk assessment, from my understanding. Okay. So uh, there's some, uh, sooner or later they've got to do a checks and balance to make sure this is being done correct. Could you do that for us? Send that's, the letter out and copy the council on it. It doesn't have to be you know like three paragraphs, just very succinctly. Okay. Could add a comment here please the new york state tax department has a process for the uh, taxing entity which is the city of augensburg to review the sales tax um it's a very specific process that happens between the comptroller of the city and the new york state tax department what they require us to do is to request a list um, of payers within the taxing district, the city of Ogdensburg, review that list. And if there's something that we see on the list that should, that appears like it should be different, um, we can ask them to investigate it. If there's a taxpayer within the city limits that we know should be on the list and isn't, we can ask them to investigate that. Um, we do have to provide the name, address, and federal ID number of such entity, which is often hard to obtain from any records um, because you're all private businesses that are paying. And so I just wanted to <clears throat> make you aware of what that process is between the taxing entity and the state tax department. So that's all well and good, but there are certain members of council who have a concern that things aren't right and we need to express that and ask them to review it and, and do whatever they can do. Don't you have to give your taxing number um, in order to get a uh, New York State like health department or a, like, I mean, so, some of those numbers we should be able to get, shouldn't we? Like 
their what is it, IEN number? The EIN number is usually synonymous with the tax authority number, correct, mm -hmm. Councillor Fisher? But what she's saying is the city doesn't have that number. I know, but they're on everybody's wall. It's a business. They have to post it. Were there other things, Andrew, that was? So um, if we're done with sales tax, the next section on your worksheet are fixed revenue. So there's really nothing to talk about there unless you all have any questions. The first one's AIM money. Right. OK. I, 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 at this point, I, I guess I'd prefer to go line by line down the revenue just to ask questions and take a look at it. Okay. So federal payment in lieu of taxes, uh, I mean, that's decreased as there... That is a payment from the Ogdensburg Housing Authority and it is paid based on revenue that they generate. So that's, that's what we <clears throat> estimate that to be. Any idea why it's... Why it's, it's a formula, we don't, I think, I don't think that we have the formula, although Angela might be able to speak more in depth on it. Uh, it's, it's a calculation based on their rents. I can't say why it's going down, but um, we don't have any say over what that is. So have they told you that was what we're doing next year? Angela, can you speak to how we arrived at the, that particular number? Sure. Uh, the number until this fall um, after the housing authority receives their audit. It's based on their net, um, a net revenue number, 10% of that number, I believe. Um, so as I look at the trend of what's been happening with that pilot payment every single year for the last three years, there's been a slight decrease in that. So I continued on the same trend in trying to estimate that number because it is not a, unlike some of the other ones in the city, it is not a fixed pilot payment. So I just used the trend that we've had over three years and continued, but unfortunately so, it was a down trend. So actual revenue to date is 23,662 already this year. Um, revenue last year was uh, 28. So I, I think it's safe to, at a minimum, increase that line by three thousand. Well, it's gone down approximately three thousand dollars every year for the last three years. So it went from thirty-one to twenty-eight to twenty-six to twenty-three. Yeah, I don't think we should touch it. And they don't give you. They don't give you a reason why. No, we we do. It's based purely off their financial statements. So it's the conditions, the financial conditions at the entity that are driving this. So uh, without reading their own financial statements, I, I wouldn't be able to give you an indicator of what's we've making already received, We've already received 23,662 through September. We're going to receive more and we don't want to go to... That twenty-three thousand is the entire payment for the year. It's a one-time payment. Okay. Um, other payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, we have twenty-three to date, and we're at twenty budgeted. Yeah. Again, I mean, that, those are those are based on trends from on those pilot payments. Is there any reason to assume we, we wouldn't get the same amount that we've already gotten through September? I, I believe, Councilor Reach, without pulling out the work, um, one of those pilots is expiring. So those are your manufacturers and the Remington Museum. And I, I, I'd have to pull out the work, but I believe one of those is is come to the end of the pilot agreement period. Okay. Interest and penalties have gone down significantly. 254 and 20 down to 150.
just one second, Council Reach, and I'll pull up a report for that. Um, these are the payments received through the collection system for taxes, et cetera. So there has been a decrease in that line, um, you know, year to date uh, through the current period, we're at 163. I'd have to go back and compare the detail when this account was running at the higher number, but we do have a reduction of taxes. So therefore any interest on that would presumably be less as well. Um, I thought we were increasing taxes. No, in, in the last two years, we've had a decrease. Of so we have 147 to 163, you said to date, Are, will there be more payments this year? Most likely, yes, people pay taxes through the end of the year on the late payers. I'd, I'd be comfortable with increasing that line by 20,000. And that's still way less than, uh, it's only yeah, 20,000. Is there anybody in favor of that? Outside water users? Interest and penalties. Line four A one zero nine zero. On the revenue, Dan, on yeah. page uh, B one, fourth line. Fourth line down from the top. Yeah. You want to you want to bring that up by twenty? Yes. It was 254 in, in, in 2020, right? And then. Actual in 2021. Uh, yeah, so. It yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that would be fair. Is there two more consensus to increase that by 20,000? Once again, this it's is a function, you know, oh, okay. oh, okay. revenues equals income, which, which means, uh, you know, maybe we can save some of these jobs. Yeah. Sounds like there's a consensus. So yeah. sales, sales and use tax, we increased by two hundred thousand. Uh, What was, the, what was the difference in 20 and 21 with 320 to 219 in utility gross receipt tax? We budgeted 300 for 2022. That's a $20,000 difference in calendar years 20 and 21. Yeah, for some reason, the... Uh... The actual revenue, if it's correct here for 21, was the, was almost a hundred thousand dollar drop between 20 and 21. I don't know why that would be. And it doesn't look like we're going to meet our projected budget for. It. Yeah. I don't want to so I'm good with that staying at three. <laughs> Yeah, the next the next line that I have was traffic violation. No, I'm sorry, police fees and and traffic violations. But police fees, uh, what is that? Police fees. Dog dog license? No, no, those are in the clerk's office. Just gone. Exactly. Police, fees. Police fees, I believe, are going to be what we get from court. So, um, and these things, if no one's held responsible, um, that's why that is going down. Police fees. Yeah, it's a 
So that's like a fixed number from court fees. $300, right? Yeah, line item on that is $1529. $300. Yeah, so yes, that's exactly what that is. So police fees is um, when subjects pay fines for whatever offense it is up in, in court. Um, the little bit of fees the city gets back from that and um, they're ordered very little uh, in this day and age so um, we don't get much back from that in the same with uh, I know you mentioned traffic violations the, the same thing we, we see uh, uh, very little return there um, a lot of traffic violations are, are essentially um, set the judgment just on the, the court uh, fee itself, um, no no fine. So we're not receiving much back on there, but you, that's also where our parking tickets will also come into that um, vicinity there as well. Uh, we'll come into this line item. So uh, the more parking tickets we write, um, that's where that comes into play. So if we increase that by 5,000, um, is it, I mean, could you write more parking tickets and more Absolutely speeding not. tickets and violations? And Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> and, and and I say that with all honesty because um, it, it's been a battle um, to get payment on a traffic ticket. Um, this has been something we've been working on for over a year with um, Mr. Goldie and actually with a unified court system is trying to get some more teeth to our um, uh, parking tickets. Um, honestly, if they're not paid, I hate, hate to say it here in a public, public room, but <laughs> we don't hold a lot of teeth there. Could we lock their wheels or have their vehicles towed? If we had a complete parking bureau, but you're adding a whole nother bureaucracy and a whole nother unit to our city. Government. Yeah. Well, I mean, right. if you called and just had, you know, you give them a ticket and you had the car towed, and, you know, they, they have to pay to get their car back, though. Yeah. They quit parking on that, unfortunately, on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. Again, it's a whole administrative process and you have to have an appeal section. Uh, you have to have a court that is willing to hear and prosecute these tickets. Um, it, it's a whole process, and that's what we're trying to figure out. Um, <laughs> oh, we'll get there, but it's it, it's not as simple as it was even uh, 10 years ago. Uh, the city attorney used, used to go prosecute these tickets, and uh, it, it was a lot easier. It was much easier, uh, <laughs> and we're not quite there. so. We've actually we've doubled the fees on all our tickets in recent years. Um, a parking ticket used to be ten dollars, now they're twenty. Um, trying to increase some revenue, um, trying to um, all handicap tickets have uh, doubled again. So um, our tickets are much more expensive than they used to be. Okay, can you do them in a? Could could it be written under written under an OMC? That's what we write them under, so we get the fees. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, all of them are written under the OMC, except for the the specific ones that are just state laws. But yeah, if there if there is an OMC for that violation, that's where we write it under, so the city gets the money. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Um, code enforcement, hey, Andrea. Um, it's almost doubled since last year. Those fees are associated with rental inspections. Um, a rental inspection is $90. It covers the first three inspections by the Code Enforcement Office. Uh, it's up this year. We are at capacity. We're at full capacity in the Code Office. Two Code Enforcement Officers, which we haven't had before. Um, and we're catching up from when we weren't doing them for the last two years. So. Uh, this is based on what we project. We actually have it all calendared out for 2023. So you'll catch so the, up the, all the ones you didn't the, get? 
we won't really ever catch up. By law, we are required to do rental inspections. By New York State law, we are required to do rental inspections for uh, multifamily four and over. And our municipal code requires us to do uh, any rental, even single family rentals. Um, so I don't know that we'll catch up. Uh, there's We do them every uh, multifamily every year and um, um, the lower numbers we do every every three years. So we have them all calendared in and we're so catching up the oldest. Well, I guess I'm getting at, will we get over like the, the dollar amount you have here, like the 25,000? Um, do you, you think they might get to, a, you know, a few more of that because obviously during COVID nobody got done? We have, we actually have them scheduled out. So if, you know, this number accounts for some cancellations, but if we didn't have cancellations and we did all of them that are physically in the code calendar for 2023, it would be 27,000. How, how did you get to 50 this year? Just because we've been doing, we have two full-time code enforcement officers and we have Don McCarthy in the code enforcement office who has also assisted. So we've been able to get more done this year. And sure. we haven't had as many cancellations Sorry, up for generating another ten thousand dollars in revenue. No, know. sir, I don't think that's realistic. No, I'd say twenty five hundred, if I, even five grand. I, like I said, if we don't have any cancellations, we're projecting twenty seven thousand. So if you want to go to twenty seven, but twenty five is more realistic, knowing that we will have cancellations. I'm in favor of three thousand. I'm good with two. With Andrew's suggestion. No, just to be safe. I mean, we you know you can't deal with an imperfect world. It's no different than staffing any unit. So, All right. Let's meet in the middle. Go say twenty-five. Two. So, so you're thinking two. Which one? Two. She said she could do three. Uh, three, but well, let's go. Uh, let's go. I'll go to two, but I think twenty-five hundred probably be better. Every. I'm fine I'll with two to five. five. I mean, right. this isn't really a game. I'm, I'm telling you, the, the 25 is <laughs> realistic. Um, if you want to know what we've scheduled with no cancellations, you know, I think you can get to 27. I think that going above that is is irresponsible. I don't think it's a game either. I, I think that there's a certain amount of impetus on staff to generate revenue, whether it's the clerk's office, the code office, the police department. The fire. I mean, if you want jobs, you got to generate revenue. So that, that's the way I look. And, and as far as the game thing goes, it's not a, it's not a game. And, and because going line by line, obviously there's people that have been going line by line, looking at where you could pick up a couple, a thousand here, twenty five hundred here, or whatever. And at the end, that's what's either going to make or break this. This page is it. You, you, you know if. So it's no, I don't, I don't. It's not a game. I, I don't think we should go any I, higher than Andrea's I recommendation. Think, and I think it's also, you know, um, staff's responsibility, you know, if there are different ways to generate revenue, whether it's police, fire, or if they need to be reviewed and increased, if our fees, I don't know when the last time rental inspection fees were. I mean, was it the original law? Or? We looked at increasing the fees. Um, I think that getting getting back on track in 2023 and possibly increasing the fees in 2024, it would would be a recommendation. We did not recommend increasing the fees for this year. Let's stick to the 25,000 uh, interest rate. I mean, it's it's a no brainer. I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of the three that she said was possible. So, is there anybody in favor? You said two. For the record, I, I said two. Two, two. two is fine. Two. I'm in favor. Of I'm good with two. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go, go crazy here, you know, and, 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 and you know, well, she's, it's very she's really it's significant money and, but all of it adds up. I'm, I'm so. not, listen, I get it, but, but let's be realistic in the cause too, and, and, and be smart about it. And I mean, that's you got three for two. Is there another one? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So pool concession and lifeguards, you know, 
at one time we were raising nine thousand dollars in revenue and we're, we're at zero this year and that's because we're not right now funding the pool i i fully anticipate that we'll find some way to fund the pool so uh, i hope we can I, I wouldn't want to see it down there closed so uh I wouldn't mind putting some money in there for revenue, or I maybe we should wait till. I don't think we should put any money in that revenue line until you decide if we can open a pool. I mean, right now this budget reflects no pool. I don't think we should. Okay, I I think you're right. Can I get that in writing, John? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We actually have not received a quote um, for the timing that this budget has been pre prepared, but we anticipate that there's upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars of repairs that really need to take place. We did not open the baby pool this year because of leaks. We have leaks in the in the main pool. We had to close the pool on two different days because of pumps and sensor failures that we had to have emergency fixes for. So if we write a community development block grant next year, we can actually put in for those things. Well, our numbers have not yet allowed us to qualify for that at, at a community-wide level. You a, if you do a neighborhood evaluation the way we always did it, though, and the way Dank would do it, then we can apply every year and we'd be eligible for it. So we just did a community, uh, a targeted income area survey for the East David Street target area where we have CDBG funding to do a preliminary uh, engineering study. And we, you have to get 90% response rate. Of the 90% response rate, 51% have to qualify as, as low to moderate income. After going door to door and handing out surveys, we received 36% of the surveys back. I, and of the 36, 20% of them are income qualified. So in the city's experience in doing them um, in, this year we haven't been successful and at a community-wide level we have not gone below uh, the appropriate threshold so so but there are you would agree that there are poor areas in this community i would hope absolutely okay that there are there are well below 51 percent of low mod there are there are problematic areas and if if, if our staff can't do it then we should budget for and hire a consultant that could do that and that can write the grant too because it's worth a lot of money and it can address some of these problems everything from housing to parks to sidewalks to economic development and i've been saying it for three years there's quite a few less people in the planning and development than there were consultants consultants mike well i spend the money I think it's time uh, we do that on a different back. night and get back to revenue lines. Yep. Let's get back here. Where are we now? Uh, you, we just finished code enforcement. Well, we went all the way down to A2004, which was mm -hmm. concessions Jumping for life. Oh, that was pool, pool, yes. Pool, yes. So, are we going to do any increases on the arena or the marina? I think we don't have a pool. We did an increase last year, right? We did increase the rates at the marina. And at the and at the Arena. Lockwood. Yeah, both places. Was it five percent we did? I don't know that we did a percentage, uh, but we did review the rates for the marina. We did increase them and we did increase them for, for skating rates as well. There are no increases proposed in this particular budget at either of those facilities. We did invest two hundred thousand dollars. Yes, we did. In we do pay five thousand dollars to have uh, ice is cheap. A company come in and cut the weed. For twenty twenty three, we budgeted six thousand dollars to do the the weed cutting. Should we raise the marina to six thousand dollars to cover? Because we never had that cost prior. This Should is the first it? year we did we did that. Mm -hmm. Should we raise it to cover it for twenty twenty three? Well, Where are we? Or don't hire them. Six thousand. I mean, A two zero zero six, uh, which is the marina rentals. Thank you. Should we go to fifty one thousand for consensus or? Sure. 
I heard three of us. Yeah, I meant so yeah, I five grand. So many. Or six, 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 six. So yeah, raising the rates. It's it's a, it's it's much better than you know the doctor yeah. like this. It was a big investment, and now we're also investing in the leads. Uh, the arena, um, you know, someday that refrigeration system is going to pick up. And we're not going to have any money for that. That's what's happened over the last couple of years. Right. And that's millions. So, dollars. should we raise 4000 there? Would that be reasonable? What's the rate there at the rank right now? Shane can come speak to this, but we, we think that the 70000 that's projected is is aggressive and it will take mm -hmm. um marketing we actually budgeted some money in that same budget page as an expense for printing and advertising to cover some additional outreach into canada to ensure that we make the seventy thousand mark so i really can't recommend going above but that we made, but we made eighty seven thousand in 2021 right and shane can talk in detail to you about that that is related to covid and our ice rink being the only available rink Okay, that's fine. That's sufficient. So I, that's sufficient. I thought we were Shane, what's the range cheaper? Price? I think uh, there's like four separate rates. You can bring citizen so new rates like $80 an hour, and it comes up to the first thing. You can get all range from there. If you're outside the city, you pay a little more. Mm -hmm. If it's 90, then a little more if you're adult rate outside the city. I know I just did Owen's birthday party. It was 95 for a city resident, and I think it was 125 for if you were a non-city resident per hour. Fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I think, like she said, that's really aggressive to boss some people within their our own city and have children go to another entity in the city. Strictly nothing against us. They just have a piece of equipment out there they can use more for their stuff. Are we a good rate? We're probably still one of the lowest in the city. So we should we should be up. What should come if we go up? The school district even lower. School district is lower price per hour. But they're, but they're pretty booked, aren't they? Well, that's because they're the have higher taxes. This year, <laughs> this year, it, it was steady for the first two months. But when now that the school district opens, they have concessions the there for churches. We don't have concessions right now. So minor hockey, for example, lets play the games at the school because they can generate money for themselves off the side. So that, that hurts just a little bit. And they have one day a week, but they, they rent a block of their ice cream. And they have better facilities just as far as showering and things like they that. Do, they do have showers, but they definitely think that doesn't matter. Right. Showers would be a big fun. I think we gain more adult league. If we did gain an adult league, I used to build a school district from there now. So if we increased it by 10,000 and, and you came back in. I would not recommend. If you get the, the 81,000, hear me out. One. Hear me out. So, if we increased it by 10,000 and you came back later after the budget's adopted with revised rates, like 10% increase, uh, I mean, I don't see why you couldn't make the extra 10,000. The, the, the 2021 rates, if we were the only game in the North Country having the rate over, if you charge more money. For our people, and that's that. Right. That would be seventy-seven hundred. If we have what we brought in this year, I don't have it in front of me. I don't think the court can make it a seven. We're supposed to make it this year. You know, we can put it in there, and like you said, we're going to go aggressive in January. You know, to try to bring Canadians across because we are a lot cheaper than them. We just don't want to. And then if we charge too much to our local people. We're just going to jump ship and go to the other end of the town. Okay. Right. Okay. So stay the same. Is that what staff recommend? Yeah. So when you get to this budget, when uh, which won't be tonight. Raise, by all means, if you want to raise rates, but I still think it's seven thousand. Even if there is an additional rate fee, yeah. it's still an accurate number. We have to have staff on you know, working, trying to raise revenue. That's what we got. I mean, I think, but I, I do, I see Mackenzie posting, she's doing various different things. Now we've got, you know, youth pick up hockey. There's different, there's a lot more skating opportunities to utilize it during the day. So I, I see where she's pushing mm -hmm. to have more opportunities available for the public, but. 
even open skating prices may need to be something that we look at too. We've talked about that. Yeah, but this number really, we will only get to 70 if the printing and advertising budget doesn't change and we are successful in attracting Canadians to use our, our rink. That is, that is critical into reaching the 70. Well, you might want to look at the rates then and bring them to us at a future time. We typically review the rates annually when we prepare mm -hmm. the budget. Mm -hmm. I just sure we were the lowest in St. Lawrence County, though. So. Well, the school district is. He said one of the lowest. lower than us. So. There's only two rates, right? Interest and in earnings is. Can Angela say what uh, that is? Excuse me, one minute. Uh, was there was there a, uh, something done with the with the marina? No. Oh, the marina was increased six thousand. Five, I thought. Five, six, six, six. six. Oh. Oh, okay. I missed. It was increased six thousand. Yeah. Yeah, that's the cost that we pay for the weed removal. That's what we paid this year, and that's what we had budgeted for in twenty twenty three. So we're going to fifty one thousand. Yep. Thank you. So a twenty four oh one interest in earnings is. Uh, there's 43,000 to date and 30,000 budgeted next year. Was that an anomaly or was that? A... No, um, that particular line item is a function of the New York class accounts that the city is invested in and the rates have been increasing in the last four months, roughly in that fund. And so what we're seeing as an increase of revenue is just a function of that. Um, it is difficult to say it was very low the prior year, um, what that will do in the current year. Um, so the estimate on that was to um, use the figure of 33,000, I believe is what is in the budget. 30. 30,000. So as, so as, as interest Angel. rates increase, um, aren't, aren't returns increasing as well? Yes, correct. That that is why we've seen an increase in that revenue. Would you object if we increase that by ten thousand dollars? I wouldn't, um, simply because we do have some just in the last month some stronger earnings in that account. Okay, so I'd make a. I'm. I'd be in favor of increasing that by ten thousand dollars. It's on um, A two four zero one interest and earnings. And Angela, what, what what at what rate of return are we getting now? Typically, it's hovered around one, didn't it? Or uh, these are different types of accounts, counselor powers, and I can look up the rate. Um, but the class just announced that there's another increase coming, so I can provide that information to council what the historical rates have been in the last nine to ten months. That'd be great. So would uh, could I have? I uh, got two votes for increasing that. I'm in. I'm good. Three. Okay. Or okay. Could I just um, suggest one item be reviewed that is above this, and that is the outside water users line? I was just getting there. Oh, thank you. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I think it's definitely time to increase that. It's been 110 straight across for the last three years. And I mean, we're, we're talking sewer, we're talking our water, the people that live here. Well, I'm sorry, but if you're outside the city, you, know, you, you need to pay more. The last three years, is, it's just like, you know, we made it two years with our insurance didn't go up. Well, it did go up. So it's it's time for everybody to, you know. What are the so I got a question on that. How, how can we bring it up? I got a question on that. I guess that doesn't my question. Go, oh, go ahead. I just want to know how, like, if, if I said put, I don't know, how how would we increase that line based on the fee, do we have to increase the fee high enough to, to kick this line up or did you do the same thing you did on the line back here and it doesn't matter how much you increase it, you're still gonna be looking at 100, 100 or whatever the 23 proposal was. So, I mean, if, if I just said, you know, let's let's kick up the outside user fees by $50,000. So that's not I mean, possible. Is it impossible? I, I don't know, that's what I'm asking. Sure. No, I can explain with the outside user fees. There's nine, um, nine in companies, etc., that are charged outside water user fees based, and it's 
the fee is based on your it is based on your tax rate. So in the last two years, as you've lowered the tax rate, the, the amount of money collected from the outside water user fees has also been lowered. Um, this budget did keep it at the 110 that it's historically have been. You can see the $88,000 is your 2022 number. That's not changing. Um, if we were to go with the 12 to 15%, we're gonna be in that $110,000 range. If we're only going to stay within the 2% tax cap um, limits, I would suggest a reduction of that line by $20,000 roughly. Yeah, so, the that way that works, so the way that works is like this. Let's say John wants to open up a store outside of Oxford, John's Burgers, and uh, he's gonna pay a water fee. This, this outside user fee is not, is, is not associated with the water fund. This is, so he would not only pay the water fund, he would not only pay, let's say, just hypothetically speaking, town of Oswegatchie taxes, he would also pay the city to our general fund, the same as what taxpayers pay. So it's just an extra fee. So if the tax rate's 20 bucks a thousand, that's what the fee is. If the tax rate's 10 bucks a thousand, that's what this fee is. So if we lower but, the tax but rate. But it's also a water rate in there too. Right? No, not on this line. This line is the extra fee. That's what she just explained. Water rate is in the water budget. This this line is the extra money. If there's a fee that goes for not being in the city, but being on the outside of the city. So basically each one of these people, since there's nine and we got 88,000, they've, they've each paid 10,000. Yeah. So they, they pay the equivalent of what the city's tax rate is on on their business so that's what that's what i'm saying the actual was eighty-eight thousand, so rounded up it's basically if there's only nine pay and there's they each pay ten so it's not equal like just, that it doesn't work like that no okay no so, so you have go ahead it's based on your property yeah. so if your property was worth two million dollars just on the other side of the highway and his property is only worth fifty thousand you're paying a, you're paying the augensburg tax rate as a fee for using Augsburg water and this, in addition to the water fee. And this line is just for that assessment? Yes. And, and you're saying that it should be reduced 20 because we're not raising taxes enough? Because we're not. reducing the tax rate. Yes. It's tied yeah. to the tax rate. Okay. So if tax rate goes up, that goes up. If tax rate goes down, that goes down. Well, let's revisit it at the end of the yeah. Right. When we when we redo the taxes, if uh, let's say if, if you if you went to fifteen percent, that <laughs> line would increase. If you went to two percent, it's going to decrease. Like right. So. so let's let's revisit it toward the end of the of the budget process. Right. It's like a it's just like a property tax. It's the same thing. Well, we would adjust that to be consistent with the tax rate when right. we redid the sources. Okay. So as Angela was saying, that's going to be a decrease of 20 mm -hmm. at the well percent. we have to amend it that way it no it'll automatically well, that's yeah. going to be what it is okay. so you could guess that it's going to be more but that's going to be what it is it's tied to the tax rate yeah, that's what the code so means. it's whatever the tax rate is a24 a24 2411 rental of real property what is that for Who, who's running this fucking thing what was that like? I'm, I'm just trying to play catch up. That's all. Okay. I just thought I heard it. <laughs> the A2411 rental of real property is um, rental received from T Mobile, ATT, et cetera, for the cell towers. How come that has gone down? Seems like we should be increasing those rates too. Um... Big telecommunications company. I think that the, the rental of real property, it did go up. I thought it did too. It's well, up it was 20 90, grand. It was 92,000 oh, and 20. 20. And oh, I was looking at our this. revenue just keeps going down. Closer, closer to 93. Is that a, a function of the agreement or is that, uh, I mean, it it's seems like, like 10 years we ought to be in, charging. In 2020, um, T-Mobile made a significant payment to the city um, outside of the normal monthly payment. And 
that's that would be your your twenty thousand dollar difference there. Do you know what that was for? In twenty twenty, I do not. Uh, I could. I believe it may have been an upstart. I believe they may have just come into the uh, j just started, so there might have been a charge in the beginning. Don't quote me on this. I think there may have been a charge from the beginning, and then the rental fees on top of it. I think T-Mobile just finally made its way up to the North Country. I don't know how much longer they'll be here. But. Well, those those should probably be reviewed too for increases if it's possible. I mean, got to have revenue. I don't mean to, you know, just building permits. Uh, we 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 are going to have one project. I know that they're graduated. The, the permits based on the value and things I right. So we are going to have the the brewery for sure, and we may have the hotel project. Um, I mean, we had sixty two thousand and twenty one. Right. That includes. Um, a $10 million uh, ho hospital project, as well as the new Taco Bell. So that's, that's, so it does graduate, depending on the value of the project and everything. Yes. Yeah, we did with the Hackett's too. And we may have Hackett's too. So um, and they, we... they all may get five up plans. No? This is just for building permits. Oh, permit. Can we increase that line by 10,000? Be optimistic, and I, you know, I don't know how our. I, I mean, that's pretty consistent. Uh, the, obviously, the ten million dollar project at the library and a new Taco Bell; those were those were million dollar projects that you Ogdensburg doesn't typically see. So the thirty five is consistent with with work we would know we are having. Um, I, I've been told for several years we're going to have a hotel, so I, I don't, I can't really recommend basing that line on projects we that we our, hope will happen. I mean, and we can't have our people out there making sure people are getting building permits. And I think that they are, um, to the extent of, that, I mean, we encourage everyone to get building permits, but I think that um, there's no one up here in front of me that would tell me everybody gets building permits. So. I got one this year and they, their response was, uh, gee, I wish there was more people like you. Cause yeah, they, sometimes so they gave we, me the impression that there were a lot of people out there that weren't getting building permits, but they're the enforcement agency. So. Well, well, did you just double? Yeah, did, they, did they hit you for double? <laughs> I hope they hit you for double. I mean, it's there's some projects it's very easy to to check on and be like, oh, does that project have a permit? They're doing a roof. Uh, there's other projects where you're redoing your bathroom or kitchen or rewiring your whole house that there's no apparent signs that someone's doing work. So um, the combined tax rate is what's made people go underground. They want to have a nice home. They want to maintain their home, but then they can't afford to live in their home with the combined tax rate. So this is what happens. 60,000 is a lot per thousand. Thousand. Next one. I don't think there's much left on that page. No, I'm on the next page now, but <laughs> are there other comments on revenue? Miscellaneous receipts this year we had sixty thousand to date and your budget and twenty thousand. A two seven seven zero. So it's midway through page B two. Mm -hmm. Yep. Angela, do you have the detail on that particular line? I do. Uh, we had a Turtleberg. Uh, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right. Settlement in that one thirty thousand. Turtleberg. Yep, that's a that's a settlement with the cheese plant. So that's why and this year slightly inflated. We also had a receipt of funds. Um, we combined 
it's interesting, but we had some money coming in from the Pride and Beautification. There was a project going on for that. So of the amount that you're looking at, um, 43,000, safe to say, will not repeat in next year. The, the hydro project uh, income, don't we, haven't we lost to the school and we basically have to pay that money right back to them in taxes? Um, I have to, to be honest, I don't know the status of that particular um, litigation. Um, I believe the school wouldn't cooperate with a pilot plan for it. and uh, So I believe the city is responsible for back taxes and probably the whole 35000 at their, their rate. So, hey, uh, hey, I'm sorry. Mayor, this is a different uh, revenue outside of that particular one. Um, Ampersand Hydro, years ago, and I can't recall the year, came into an agreement with the city to pay a certain amount of money um, each month for that facility. And so there is a contract on that. Um, it's considered royalties that are coming from that facility to the city. So this is independent of the ongoing uh, tax issue. Um, Thank you. Up at the top, a 26 forfeiture of crime proceeds. Um, 2022, there was 17,000 and some change. We're not expecting to seize anything in 2023 or any money. Is that what that is? I'm, I'm sorry, Angel. If we did receive money on that line, that money is restricted in use, so it can't be put into the general fund for general operations. There's a very specific purpose for that money. The police chief could probably tell you more on that. Asset, it's, is it asset forfeiture? Yeah, it's, it's actually it's asset forfeiture. Um, I hope we see more money, but in total, I will let you know what we have in that account. We have uh, no more, no less than 30,000 at any given point. Um, in 2021, we seized over a quarter million dollars, and out of that quarter million dollars, I only saw about 16,000 of that roll in so far. So it's a waiting game. Um, as you've seen this year, we made two resolutions on just two minor little things that weren't in the budget. So that's kind of what we've been using it for. Um, really, you can use it for equipment and training is really what it's geared for. Um, so as things pop up that we are not budgeted for that are needs of the department, it, it is there to be utilized. So. Sorry, a lot of that get you, Chief, does a lot of that get you? I'm sorry. Did I no, jump in front of someone? No, go ahead. Uh, it's if it's a go ahead. Uh, I'm assuming some of that's used for active investigations as well. Uh, no, it's not. We have a. Uh, we'll get into that in, in the budget. We have a uh, an investigations fund where we have uh, money on hand for that. Um, but it, it can be used during investigations. Yes if need be and that number can well yeah i don't want to get into the weeds on that okay right. same question that councillor fisher had related to line uh 2655 other minor sales i mean we generated twenty thousand last year we're projecting a thousand this year we get a breakdown of those sales or was there one big one or that i'm overlooking I, no i could take a look at that the account number again i apologize um two six five five okay i believe what's in there is the returning of the tahoe um we did receive some money on that and yes so small amounts of money outside of seventeen thousand three hundred fifty three um was what was received when the tahoe that was assigned to the fire department was turned back in that will not repeat itself obviously in 2023 thank you 
if we sell the fire truck, how much is the income from that projected to be? Is that in the line here? Uh, actually, Councilor Reach, I believe we did budget for that. Um, Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we put it in sale of equipment. I was just yeah, going to say that. That's about right. Two lines down, two, three lines down. Yeah, it's, that's about right. We're asking, I think, 9,500 for it or something like that. Yeah, originally, originally it was up for sale for, I think, 75. So. Hold a two six six zero sale of real property. Yeah, so that's the sale of surplus property. Oh, so when you sell a house, that's part of the uh, whatever that other agency is. The land bank is separate. The land bank. Did are there any coming up that are going to be? I know someone that's buying one that just had a hard time buying it, but are things like that calculated in there? The land bank? No, 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 the land bank is stays in the land bank. Yeah, the land the bank land is a completely bank. separate, separate the entity. Doesn't, the city doesn't contribute any money so to we, the land bank. I so mean, we sell you the properties for you to fix up, and and that stays within your fund. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, I think the only benefit we would get from the land bank would be any property that's Increase acquired. Property you'd eventually down. acquire taxes on it. Right. So. So this number is the number that we project based on the city's inventory of surplus properties and the sales that we anticipate having in the spring. Um, the land bank is not in this at all. Uh, they might buy a property from the city, but their sales don't have any impact on the city's. The sales then feed into another project. And you applied for additional funding, another round of funding this year, right? We haven't heard on that yet. We applied for and received $100,000 for administrative costs, which was all that's allowable right now. They, uh, HCR has not opened up phase two, which is for what they're calling implementation, which is construction, new construction, rehabilitation, and demolition. been a great program and a big help to the city the land bank they've just done some reporting uh, for the New York State Association on um, their invested funds the resale and then the e equating um, property tax revenue to jurisdiction so I will provide that to the council <coughs> thank you I know it's not much but I think we can add to sale of equipment uh, my department will have the sale of the 2011 chevy tahoe maybe twenty five hundred dollars if we get out of that truck okay, I, I will go, i'll go with that twenty five hundred dollars more okay sorry where are we that was two six six five Minor sales? Uh, sale of equipment. And the miscellaneous state aid, is that a is that a function of the why is that a function of COVID or something? A three zero eight nine. That one uh, is a function of the little bit of money we have left in the FRB to collect on for the leases. A little bit we have left to collect on what? Lease ve the lease vehicle program. <clears throat> Chips money is going to go down. Budget $500,000. I think it'll be new circuit programs. Actually, there's, I think that $5,700 from this year. Usually it doesn't come to middle April, you know, March, April, so they make the budget just for that. But we will get a chips allocation. Yeah. More than this. 
And the 570 is what we have left over? 70. 70. So you're expecting a half million in chips money? But the last uh, last year we got 775. Was that is that not likely? They started several new programs. I don't know off the top of my head how long they're funded for. They can stop them at any time. And there's hot bills to pay state touring route, which added to our total for the previous year, but they should be like 426. And then every so many years they got to renew the so if we increase that by a hundred thousand, I mean, you know, that's just it's money in, money out. If we don't, if we don't spend it, we don't get it. It's revenue, um, but you're saying it's not funny your operations are. The seventy thousand dollars that we put in there, about the five hundred thousand, we planned out to take the lake this year. Okay. So if we don't spend. It's just left over to accumulate it for the following year. So it's not like that we could just say, well, we went seven hundred thousand dollars, it won't see that we spent the money. So it's like an offsetting revenue. Okay. And operation stone garden. Uh, there's no uh... so this 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 line is what is you cannot add or subtract mm -hmm. from it. Top secret. No, it's not. That's just all they gave, or they're going to give. Is eighty-one thousand? <coughs> yeah. Well, you have to have the manpower in order to do it. That's not and any of these revenues. All of them are just money in, money out. Right. So that's including Operation Snow Garden. That's uh, what I have currently in the grant is eighty-one thousand dollars. Um, we have to work it to get that money. It's reimbursed. We work it. We pay it up front. And it comes in as a reimbursement. Um, we've been very creative with Operation Stone Garden. Um, Homeland Security has been very good with us on how we use it. We use it for traffic details. Um, we've done a lot of drug seizures with it. Uh, it's been very good for us to get creative outside of normal operating budget to um, get the work done. It's been a very good program. You could put a third man on the road too, right? Certain days of the week if you schedule it right. You have to work with them, don't you? Yeah, that, that's the oh. thing. It, it's it's task. It's very task force oriented. So these operations are working hand in hand with a with a border patrol agent, not always within uh, the limits of the city of Ogdensburg. So um, not but, always as easy to say yes and no. That I can schedule it to be aligned with with the ships. So you you. Uh, let's word this correctly. You you can you have the power to pretty much disperse or put people in and do what you want. For the most part. Okay. So we could use some of it. Staff oriented. So I cannot so if, if your question is to me, can I use it to fill ship? No, my question is, is can you, if you have a ship and your two men are on, and then this is an extra program, and the third guy's on there and he's working that eight hour shift under Stone Guard, and he's in the city and a call comes in, he can respond just Absolutely. as though anyone. Absolutely. So you get yes. the third body and it's on somebody else's dime. Correct. Which makes total sense. Yes. So I just didn't know if you could apply for more funding. That's what I was asking. So actually, so out of this 81,000, 60,000 of that is from. Fiscal year 2020 that we're still using off. Um, and that 21,000 is fiscal year 2021. That's how much the federal government has dropped um, and what they're allocating in this grant. And we're expecting fiscal year 2022 to be even less than that. So um, moving forward, this is not going to be a, um, a grant that we're not going to be. <laughs> as we have for the last uh, what, 12 years of the grant that we've had it. I didn't have any more questions on revenue. I don't know if anybody else do. I did have a couple other things. On so I suggested uh, that we bond the ready projects 
including the one that we just paid for. And uh, in in July, is there a chance of doing that? I mean, together between that and the FEMA was eight hundred seventeen thousand. I think our share of the ready at the Maple City Trail was seven hundred and some thousand. So we will be. We've been kind of working towards getting a resolution to council for the twenty eighth of November to finalize the ban for ready financing. For all of it. I mean, at that time, you all can decide if there's. If you disagree with the recommendation from staff on how to how to do it. Right. Right. So I mean, you know, like I said before at a council meeting, I mean that that stuff, these capital projects, capital equipment, it's like taking out a mortgage rather than just trying to pay for it. So, which I think is, is foolish if you really don't have the money. So, if we, it's we paid that seven hundred and some thousand, right? I'm trying to look for my page. Well, so the work that's being done under Ready is there's a grant portion. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, initially when the project came out in 2019, it was ninety percent grant funded. Right. Um, that isn't the way that it works out mathematically now based on the actual project cost. But so there's a portion of every payout, every disbursement right now that we then get back from this from the state until we meet our our grant amount. Um, so we're sharing the cost of, of all of our expenses right now. With the state. With the state. Right. So in the end, we're gonna we're gonna bond for our share of the ready program or that's what the resolution will be anyways council will debate it correct and that includes the maple city trail it'll we'll address both projects both okay, the good. maple city trail and the morissette park dubisky so project. if council decided to do the bond then that money would go back in to the budget to the fund balance that we spent on maple city trail already um, I'm not sure that I really follow that, but Angela, maybe you can speak to that. Yeah, Councilor Stamberley, can you, I'm not following the that either. Can you rephrase your question? So, <laughs> on July 25th, <coughs> Council uh, reappropriated funds from the fund balance to make payments. Angela, or, uh, Andrea, as a matter of fact, just recent probably for the umpteenth time to us, uh, the money that was spent, and I thank you for that. And uh, on the 18th, I had it here, it was right here. Excuse me. I guess it was modifications requested, budget modifications as of June 30th. And yes, on sir. the email, uh, transfer to capital fund, for Maple City Trail, 706000 and then transfer to capital fund, FEMA flooding, one hundred and ten nine, dollars so 111000 almost totally, $817,000. So what I'm asking for is if we chose council to bond all of this FEMA activity and, and actually redo our waterfront like the plan is, uh, would, wouldn't that money that 817,000 or at least the 706 go back into the fund balance because we took it out to make a payment. That was my Correct. question the, as well. The 706 would most likely end up there. The um, 110, so there, I'd have to double back on this one with you, but we did have a bond that was issued to the capital fund in excess of what the project was for. Um, so 706, um, that would end up back in fund balance. The 110, um, I'd have to just check on something related yeah. to that. Um, I wasn't but, sure about that, right. But the 706, yeah. I guess, would almost be, if council decided to bond rather than just spend the money, uh, that would go back into our fund balance. That, that's a huge number for this budget. It's a huge number to put back into the fund balance, um, correct. And I think that when we put through that resolution and the supporting information for the bond on that project, that that 
this particular monies would be a lot clearer in that presentation. Right. Which will be on the 28th. Okay, good. Wouldn't so isn't that isn't that budget modification included in your estimates for fund balances sheets that you gave us? It is. So his point is is that oh, is that we shouldn't yeah, we, we shouldn't be taking it out of fund balance. We should be bonding, which would increase our fund balance and give us all new numbers as we work through the budget process. Correct. Yep. Just remember, you do have a uh, park to put back together at Morset. You don't have a playground. You don't have right. tennis courts mm -hmm. and other amenities. Well, that would be true of Morset Park and the Main Street pump station as well. Um, Yep. And the Main Street pump station will be a bond out of the, the uh, sewer fund, correct? The water fund, yes. sewer fund. And if, and if we bond, then we have more money in fund balance for correct. projects that you're talking about, mm -hmm. whether it be City Hall right. roof or the swimming pool or whatever it may be that we want to spend money on. You're taking uh, money out of the sewer fund, and you do have that uh, pump station put back. And other things we just did... Uh, Additional three hundred some thousand dollars to change order. I don't know. A lot of I mean, you're taking on a lot of debt. Yeah, a lot of debt. We did pay off two million dollars in debt, and then eight hundred, yeah, almost eight hundred twenty-five to the, the county. So yeah, three million went out paying off old debt. Because what happens here, if when when the bonding thing's being talked back and forth, what what doesn't come up is yeah, the bond was like. It'll be 2022 or 23 we bond. Um, it, it'll have a date of probably possibly the use for an example, 10 or 15 um, years. 2030. Yeah. And but prior to that, there's a the city will refinance that and kick it out even farther. And then eventually, 20 people 15, 20 years down the road will be paying for the bond that was back here because it's kicked down again and kicked down again. And that same money is being paid for over and you over don't in know interest. That because the only times that I think we've ever done that in, in the past is when we've oh, gotten the no, 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 no. I've got a green sheet that shows all those dates that it was refinanced and it went so right across. So what was the interest rate difference? Because that's usually the the, the, the deciding point when we're debating whether or not to wrap you don't, those into a bond. Even in your own house, you don't refinance every couple of years, every three, four years. I you mean, do if you get a substantial decrease in your rate. And just no, like I'm, I'm I'm just talking that you know because this this is four million just between these two projects, mm -hmm. right? And and I mean you haven't even touched any of the other stuff, and you just bonded for thirty five million, um, at the wastewater treatment plant. And I know this is all helpful if the taxes ever do go back up because you keep the constitutional tax limit down by just basically the shell game. Yeah. But that would work. Um, I do agree with it, taking back some of the cash because we did pay off so much bonding. Yes. But I don't think just saying a bond for the stuff is the way to go. And, and really, I, mean, I, I don't have a problem taking a couple hundred thousand or, uh, you know, or half and then put it in with a you bond or a multi-use bond for like this place and, Absolutely. you know, you know, things like that. The roof, the backer truck, whatever, right? But, oh, yeah. But I mean, so is it is it clearly understood that these sheets should be redone so that the Maple City Trail and the FEMA flooding and we're directing staff to bond for them and to redo the sheets so we have accurate numbers or revised numbers, I should say, on on these two sheets for uh, an understanding of our present situation and future situation with fund balance. I'm I'm in favor of that. You might be able to protect some fund balance that you have for some development. I'm concerned that you know when uh, we had to damage down the city docks, you guys. Uh, bonded for two million dollars, and the damage ended up being five hundred fifty thousand. You know, you use that money, and I think we're going to end up in another shell game where we're borrowing uh, money for capital projects and we're using it to run the city. I don't mean, we we ended up paying three million dollars of that past debt off, and here we are with three million dollars less debt. That debt at uh, as the last year. On city docks was $125,000. Now we paid that debt off, $3 million, and here we are, still can't afford our budget. You know, so I, I, so I'm in favor of 
Don't how, about mind. The, how about the 706? Just throw that back into general fund and we'll deal with the bonding later. That would be fine with me. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. That's, yeah. So I think there's four for that. And we'll, we'll make sure that we have to vote on that resolution when it's put. Yeah, it, it would be part of maybe a bigger bond. I don't know. Because there's more set park and there's the main street pump station, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't we didn't authorize using city money to pay for those matches yet, right? We approved it, but we didn't decide whether we're bonding or where it's coming from yet, right? Right, that's correct. You're, you're working on that, okay. And the cheese plant, with the money that we passed a resolution on in the cheese plant, um, that the, never... The council reallocated those funds to the cleanup at Shade Roller. Mm -hmm. The whole, the whole, how much was that? Was it 175, 174? It's about 300, wasn't it? No, uh, it was not that. <laughs> um, I think it was 192.7, and we allocated. Uh, honestly, I don't, I can't remember. It's 195 or 95 and, and okay, shade to not, shade roller. I don't so. think that's on the sheet either. So, you know, plus we saved. Uh, well, we didn't save, but we. When they wanted us to allocate five million dollars more towards the bond for the wastewater treatment plant for all the pump stations, we didn't do it. And we got a million dollars here. We picked up what a few more dollars here. It, it seems like it, and the state's responsible for that one, so we we could take that one off the list. Um, I think it's David Street. There's a David or South Water Street. That one was done. No, there, there's work to be done at one South one. South Water. But there's one other one that was done. We did East River. Right. So. I mean that's not really bad considering we didn't we didn't throw out and just throw our hands in the air and say let's just do a five million dollar bond and make this easy. So that money there's millions that were saved. I mean not not bonded for. So I, I don't think that. I mean so the three hundred and seventy one. Oh the three hundred and seventy one thousand to diversified construction was just for. That was for the citywide demolitions. Okay. The demolition that didn't of include so the money that we approved um out of fund balance uh budget modification for demolishing the cheese plant you said a portion of it was reallocated and that's not on the sheet so if that could be updated that would be great at least i don't think it is then the last question i had was um the ninety-eight thousand coming out of the water fund as a 2023 appropriated fund balance what is that sorry just maybe before you answer that angela so the budget modifications that were sent to you were through june 30th 2022 the transactions that you're referring to councillor reach were from um i want they were in october october 28th so i think needs to be updated. i'm not disagreeing with you i'm okay. just pointing that's out my, that's my point because we're, we're looking at stuff that's back in June, we should have something more current. So the 98,000 out of the water appropriated fund balance. That particular one, uh, you could just give me one second to pull up that information, I believe was uh, when we redid this budget, the general fund that impacted the water fund the water fund was already balanced and so in order to rebalance that as we reappropriate some expenses over there for particularly dpw um that ninety eight thousand dollars became the balancing amount for that water fund so if we do not want it go any higher than the four percent rates we would have to utilize ninety eight thousand dollars to balance that budget Oh, so that's, is that a council appropriated fund balance or is that staff's appropriated fund balance? That's uh, the staff suggestion in the preliminary budget. Oh, and the 1.2 million next to it is, is also staff's, but it's. For sewer, okay. correct. So those are 2023 suggested appropriations of fund balance. Okay. And uh, the other thing I had on revenue was uh, maybe these are a little bit more non-traditional or whatever, but I sent the 
to council, I sent charitable gift reserve fund. So the state passed some legislation to create for cities, villages, and towns to create a charitable gift reserve fund. And you can create that fund. People can make donations to it. it I think it's federal and state deductions, Angela. You can uh, deduct those on your federal, those donations, federal and state taxes. I would, I would have to verify that. I think it is. And then you can I also, so there's, there's a whole, the information I sent you, you can pass a local law to set that fund up and accept donations or, you know, have the fire department, you know, run a drive to raise money or the police department or, or public safety or whatever it may be. And the donations would, I think, be federal and state deductible. And then you could pass a second resolution. You can pass a second resolution and you can give a credit of your own real property taxes. So if someone, you know, if you did a 10% credit on it, um, someone can make a $10,000 donation and they get 10% off of the real property tax bill from the city. So it's another way to generate revenue through donations. And I'd like to see us do that and budget for it. I know in my email, I think I had $330,000. I, you know, I changed my mind on that. I think we should go with something realistic. Um, what do you think? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, you can put it in, we can do the program. I don't think we should budget for it. Yeah, I'll make a donation to it. I mean, uh, no, not that much. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I, I, I think it's conceivable, and I, I think you know maybe we need to look at that. I mean, there's there's banks out there that need to make CFA. They're called community goals or whatever. They they. They they get evaluated every year by the federal government. There's this Dan, this this is this is truly this is truly this is truly a, a way to get some of these not for profits that don't pay taxes to make donations to the city. And they should all be approached. So if you're if you if, you know you've talked about that yourself. So here's an opportunity, you know, where you can go to United Helpers or you can go to um, the diocese, or you can go to, you know, all of these tax exempt entities and ask for donations. Um, I think the church takes in donations. I think you got it backwards. So when I get my bundle of items, have some in the land of Oz here. I have no. one not only for the cemetery fund and for this and that. They can put one if you want to donate to the city, city budget. Pass that around the church. Well, maybe it's not the city. Maybe it's not the city budget. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, maybe it's the fire department having a chicken barbecue and they raise uh, three thousand dollars and it goes into that fund. I mean, that's what every all these other villages do. Just because we're called a city doesn't mean we can't do it. So now you're on to something. Yeah. You know, with these other departments. It's the same way with police and fire. Oh, I mean, the, everybody that wants these agents, fire that wants these people, here's your chance to donate and uh, above and beyond what the city. Council has allocated, and uh, there's a rep, there's a new revenue source that no one's thought of. The state passed it; it must work. I mean, why would they do it? Why would they give you the opportunity to do that? Yeah. New York State has a great record of success on many things. So, so well, if we needed new equipment, for example, and we did a fundraiser, there's or a, something. There you go. There you go. Shane's guys can put on a car wash and uh, yeah. you know, we got a new back. <laughs> you might have you might have foundations out there that are looking to make donations, like Sweetgrass Foundation. If if someone if someone was in charge of the fund, who was yeah, good no at it, implementing it, but I don't want to budget for it. John, yeah. You know, to to John to John's point, there's plenty of them out there. Yeah. Uh, in, in in reality, and, and you know, I I'm I'm kind of looking at it now. And uh, I mean, what's it gonna hurt? We passed a local resolution and, and uh, we look to install it. And I mean, if we're raising money, we're raising money. And if it can offset uh, operations or 
You know, I see there's a claim for a property tax credit. Look at the amount of tax and properties we have here. I mean, I, I imagine the state would be could help us walk us through this program. It's the only way, to, the only way to, you can accept the money. It would be to set up a program. Mm -hmm. right, that's, right. That's, that's the bottom line. It doesn't really matter whether or not. I mean, who knows? Somebody might leave their state. Maybe there's you know, someone right. out there right. that believes in, the, you know, public safety and they're willing to, you know, some they're willing to put money up, you know, make the donation, get the deductions. So I want to, I'd make a motion to. Two minutes ago. I'd make, I'd make a. I make I make a motion to conservative to set it up, instruct staff to get us the resolutions, and to conservatively no, I mean, and to conservatively budget something that we can agree on. But th this is a work session. I don't believe it. Yeah. I mean, we have a quorum. We might be able to move it, but I think I think a simple resolution just outlining no, the fine. That's all I'm government's charitable contributions we could do on the twenty eighth. Yeah. I, I I'm fine with the quorum, Mike. We, we so I I mean what's something that you realistically think could be raised? I, I think you're right. I mean it, it just it, it could be that there's organizations that will donate yeah. to projects and, things and it, it, if you put somebody in charge of it. Government programs even. If you put somebody in charge of it. Well, you, yep. what you can get, you can get a non-biased uh, group of community members to oversee this and have it be its own separate entity outside of the politics of the city of Ogdensburg and the city council. Yep. You, you, you know, I, I mean, I would imagine that's how it's going to be established. You know, with a, you know, with with no connection to politics or or direction from city hall in any aspect. You know what I mean? Other oh, yeah. than you have to. It, it's a city account, so you would have to most likely have the comptroller in charge of it. But you could leave the politics out of it, you know. But I, you know, I think there should be some direction from council in terms of what our goal is and who we want uh, in charge of it to meet our goal. Sounds like another meeting. Not, not this one. Okay. But I think you're you're on to something. Let's go to the next yeah, so in addition to revenue, um, the police chief had asked to review his budget this evening. Yeah. So. So I was thinking maybe we should do the other budget and no no disrespect, sir. I mean, he, his, his schedule doesn't meet it. That's why he wanted yeah, to. No, I know, but we're going to have more of these. Well, he asked if he could present this evening. So I, yeah. I mean, I'd yeah. like to well, ask. That's yeah. fine. That's problem. fine. That works. Because you just found almost two. Two million plus. I mean, you add, I can take a break. Then. Two, two million. I think it's two four maybe right now. Yeah. I mean, so. Are there any waters? It might. Uh, yeah, I have my own right here. That's what I'm going to say. Put it aside for now. Until they can redo this. I got you all need to come over here. Yeah, this sorry. Thing. I can do this another night. I don't like that. 22nd just doesn't really work. No, well, I'm just saying that the, looking at this and no, yeah, his no. request on having the sheet redone. We will redo the sheet, but well, I mean, it, it does change the a little bit of the uh, the atmosphere as far as the uh, accepting what we've already accepted. But I mean, you know, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to be fair. So go ahead. No, I. I I appreciate that. Um, I applaud all of you up here. That you, I mean, I'm adding up 1.1 million dollars in, in savings that you came up with. Well, there's 706 that just got thrown back into the general yep. fund. There's 70. Some, no, we we'll take 750. Yeah. Um, 330 was added. Uh, 330,000 was added from the sewer. Um, you had, kicked that up to over a million. You had 200 in estimated revenues. 200 in sales, sales tax. tax. So uh, our next work session is going to be on the 22nd, and we will have updated. We will update this for you, the revenues for you. But um, just to keep things a little efficient, we'll just move on this evening with um, the police chief's presentation. Yeah. I mean, we're all here, so. Yeah, I appreciate it. I also have six employees who are asking me every day texting me all night long 
what's happening? Do I have a job? And I still don't have an answer for them. So um, I appreciate going here tonight so I can uh, hopefully have some guidance for them um, <coughs> moving forward. So they are all actively seeking uh, new positions as we speak. Um, so last year, 2022, we started with 19 officers. And at 19, um, I was an odd number. I didn't have even shifts. Um, and they were quickly getting burnt out. And I presented this to you in midsummer, and graciously you offered uh, one more employee. We hired that employee. Um, this officer is still in the academy, slated for graduation in December. Um, and that brought us up to 20 officers. Um, still with, with these lower staffing numbers than we're historically at in, in the police department, we're historically a 25 plus uh, sworn officer department with four dispatchers. Our overtime was generally below $200,000. Uh, and there is no way we could stay under that budget. So again, in, in July, we had to come back and ask for, for more money and we're at $275,000. We're gonna come under that $275,000 mark here for 2022. Uh, however, with our increased salaries um, and, and to get everything done that we need to get done, even with our 20 officers and two dispatchers, I am asking council for a $300,000 general overtime budget um, so that we can conduct the investigations we need to conduct so that we can fill our shifts the way they need to be filled and actually operate the department the way we should be operating that department. Uh, there's a slight increase in airport overtime um, from 52 to $60,000. And again, that's just lower numbers than what was historically at the police department. That $52,000 number mark was based on that higher number of officers of 25 plus and our flight numbers haven't changed. We still have 12, 12 or so flights a week. Um, most of those flights, if not all of them weekly are on overtime. Uh, not all of these flights are fully reimbursed by the airport. I know it says 100% reimbursed. Uh, I say it's closer to 90% is funded by, fully funded by OBPA. Uh, but just the way the, the scheduling works out, uh, Stone Garden is completely reimbursed. I know we talked about that a little bit earlier. Uh, I have a maximum of $81,000 I could use, but realistic numbers are I could probably spend about $60,000 uh, in overtime out of Stone Garden for 2023. Sick leave incentive, just real quick, $6,400. That's just uh, folks that don't use their sick leave, they, they get a bonus for it. Time and accrual payouts. Excuse me. Yes, sir. So why is that not on our uh, budget sheet D4? In the preliminary budget. The I question that as well. And I'm not sure if that's a comptroller issue of just the fact that it hasn't been paid out yet. Or if in 2022, if they paid it out of the salary line. But that, uh, that gets paid yearly every December. Right, December there's going to be a lot of checks right Not for my department. Okay. Um, I have a high usage of sick leave okay. this year. Uh, I, again, my, my folks can't get time off. Um, and frankly, the, a lot of, there's a lot of sick leave. So, question to the comptroller, Angela, is, is that a mistake that 6400 is not in the proposed budget? On D4? Yeah, I, I'm just kind of trying to look through that to see why that is not on D4 or if it was combined with another number. So I can, I was just going through the work. I can follow up on that one. Thank you. Yep. Uh, time and accrual payouts that had to drastically go up uh, again with having the smaller numbers. Um, the folks down at the department are not able to use all their scheduled time 
and they're cashing in uh, their comp time usage, their vacation time. Um, so that's why that number is drastically higher than it was in 2022. We also came to you in, in July and asked to increase that uh, from, I believe we increased it to 75,000 uh, in, in July. 50,000 uh, for time and cural payouts. It, that was in that was on that July uh, reappropriation okay. budget that, that you sent us, right? So we got to remember the July twenty third meeting. It was June thirtieth, okay. actually twenty fifth meeting. Excuse me. So in the PBA and the PSU contracts, um, it will show uh, it breaks down what our, our officers have for time off and. Um, our folks don't really have six or seven weeks vacation. And I know that gets said a lot. Really, they have two or three weeks of vacation. And the other three weeks are really their, their holidays that everybody gets off. But you just get it off as, as the day falls. Our officers don't get those days off. So they can schedule two or three weeks of those vacations. Uh, whatever they have for time on the job, they get two or three weeks vacation. And those remaining... Um, three weeks which are their holidays they can't schedule those days so that's a uh, I'll use a vacation day here a vacation day there and that can't create overtime so if they don't have enough people on their shift they can't take that day off so that's the time they have left at the end of the year and that's why these payouts are as high as they are because they have to sell that time back so the PBA doesn't um, have oh, it's much nice. So you're saying they don't have enough time to use that, that, and they, they don't get six weeks? That's what you're saying? So I'm saying, so they have, six, they get so they have over five years of, so let's say a five-year patrolman has three weeks vacation, and then they have three weeks of holiday time, which is also called vacation, but it's really three weeks of their holidays. Um, so three weeks scheduled vacation, and those other three weeks for their total of six, they cannot create overtime with. They can, you know, use a vacation day here and there, they, but, they, but there's not enough people on their shift, which is the case more than likely. Um, they're not granted their day off. So they still have it. They're carrying that time and they sell it back in December. So they don't pass it around as the vacation schedule anymore? And yes, they do. The two people get to pick off for two weeks and then, yep. then it gets passed on? Right, So, but they can only schedule three those three weeks. The remaining three weeks you cannot schedule. But it's it's a total of six weeks you get off. You get five personal days, and then you get your holidays and your vacation time, and you get your sick time. Right, but so you that's that's six weeks, no matter what we slice. I, we can call it whatever we want. No, no, you have six weeks vacation. You have a week of personal, and then you have your sick time. But out of your out of your six weeks vacation, only three weeks you can schedule off. Your remaining three weeks vacation. Are, are because of holidays on those those holiday vacation days we'll call them you can't schedule as like i want to take this week off you can only use those as a day here and a day there and they can't create overtime now when that vacation schedule goes around and you bid your vacation overtime doesn't matter you pick that for your week vacation if there's overtime there's overtime so it's just it was always plentiful. You had you had the vacation sick time, but there was also time. 27 or 28 days when you're when you were working, sir. Well, there's 15. There's, there's 20 there's now. There's actually 15 vacations. There's 15 holidays, I believe, right? Yes. Okay, so 15 holidays is 365 days a year. I'm sure there's there's ample time to use 15 days. Okay, we won't argue that, but that's there's three people on a shift scheduled now, not five. I worked when there was 28 people on the road as well. It's different. Longevity and, and clothing allowance went down. Uh, younger department, not as much time on the job. So, of course, longevity went down. Specialized equipment um, went down this year. Uh, I had no grant money for equipment in Stone Garden. I, that's where most of this equipment money comes from. Um, no equipment was issued at all in this last grant. Um, through Stone Garden. However, out of the 6,000 I 
that I'm requesting, 50% is reimbursed. Uh, and that 50% that was reimbursed is $3,000 for a ballistic vest that we have a grant for, for our current cadet who's in the academy. Uh, capital equipment requesting $5,000. And what I'm trying to do here is get on a plan where we're replacing the computers in our cars um, on a rotating basis. Uh, our car computers are on 24 hours a day. They wear out. We should be replacing this technology. Our, we do our reports in the cars now. That's how we communicate with dispatch through, through these computers. Um, I have one computer and one car that is uh, now 11 years old. So the goal is to replace two a year, and that'll be approximately $5,000. Your budget says 10000 So you only need five? Yes, you know, sir. Go ahead. Sorry. I need five thousand for for the uh, computers. I think we should change that line to five thousand. I have no issues with that. Thank you. Okay. Are the time accrual payouts they're budgeted for 116,000? Is that is that what they're looking for? Yeah, I would just point out. Yes, I would just point out that in 2020, I don't know how many were it were on at that time, but maybe that's a function of fewer people proposed in this budget. It was 165. From 2020 to 2022? No, 2020 and the actual 2021 was 152. And we're at 116. So 2020 was 165. So we had we had a bunch of retirements in 2020. So um, time and accrual payouts, besides, the, that's more than selling vacation times when you have the retirement. So we had, uh, multiple retirements there so though you're having like 40 or fifty thousand dollar payouts at a time there so yeah 2020 was and also in 2021 we had retirements so those were very expensive years um capital leases actually this might be why there was ten thousand in for capital equipment um we released our entire fleet for approximately $65,000, um, but it costs about $5,000 in funds to transfer the equipment from the old vehicles to the new vehicles. So I believe it was appropriate, and Angela, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that that $5,000 in contingency funds is part of capital equipment and not capital leases? That is my recollection, yes. Okay. So you're gonna need that five. You're gonna need that five K in capital equipment. So yes, that will have to go back in capital equipment. How many non-lease vehicles do you have? Um, non-lease vehicles we have in our fleet. I'm getting rid of one. That will be that Tahoe. That will be up for sale. Um, we'll have my vehicle a vehicle that will be utilized for the SRO um, that we're replacing with a lease vehicle and we have a remaining three vehicles that are paid for with grant money and then we have two very old I say old they're like 2010 Chevy Impalas we need to use those for um, I'm as long as we have no cuts and I have I can put my detectives back to work the Impalas are their day-to-day -day vehicles um, they're very low mileage less than 30,000 miles so that's their day-to-day -day vehicles and the ones that are paid for uh, by grants three the three that are paid by grants one's driven by the lieutenant and the other two are cohort 
vehicles um, that are used for undercover or narcotics operations or surveillance purposes. Okay. Uh, the travel, the thousand dollars for travel, that is the middle of the night. We have to go out on prisoner transport. Uh, just need to have cash on hand for for such expense. Office expenses, that's their you know day to day paper supplies, uh, pens, pencils. That's where that's coming from. I'm fine with all of this stuff. Uh... Okay. Um. Get to the meat and potatoes here. Medical expenses. That's just a someone's you know injured. Um, sometimes we gotta pay a pay a bill pending if there's a, a workman's comp issue and someone's the bills isn't paid right in a hurry. And we've had officers who are facing a collection, and we're not gonna let that happen pending a comp bill. We'll cover it and. You know, we'll deal with it or if we are, we do have a hire we have medical expenses that are up front um, again we don't have any openings right now but who knows what's going to happen as a year progresses and you, you just can't predict the future so uh, that is the cost of one person so I suggest at least we leave that in there as a placeholder um, telephone chief, chief, one, I'm sorry chief just one quick question just for clarity for me how many? I mean, you just recently had a couple of come off come off a workers' comp, so that you've got some patrolmen and women that have active comp claims, correct? Yes, sir. Rough number. So I, I still. Well, have you to... know what? I, I don't want to get into any. Um, uh, you know, I I I mean, I, I'm just looking down the road, you know, to somebody that you know could possibly we could possibly lose due to a to a to a catastrophic injury some sort so uh all right I, I'm, I'm good with that thank you uh telephone um nine thousand dollars every computer we have uh every mobile device we have out there runs on a air card at 45 dollars a month 12 months a year um that adds up and there's no getting away from that. And um, what I am adding this year is we have one last piece of technology from our last round of Stone Garden grants, one more license plate reader. I don't foresee the Augensburg Police Department purchasing another license plate reader. Um, and I'm also adding a cell phone for our sergeants to carry. Um, at all times, especially as we move forward with transitioning dispatch, um, you don't have that personal connection with our dispatchers as St. Lawrence County Dispatch will have. So I want, want to be able to provide County Dispatch one phone number 24 hours a day. This is how you get a hold of a supervisor. So that's where that $9,000 comes from. Also the phone for discovery. Or yep. did you make a call? Yeah, absolutely. You yep. said you were here. Did you Yep, absolutely. Here's the city-owned cell phone. So I just had a question, Andrea, on these that he's talking about, the office expenses, the telephone, printing, advertising, equipment, maintenance, things like that. The general government central services budget has gone from 98000 in 2020 all the way up to $226,000. I thought the idea was that when I when I saw this that it was you were centralizing all these things, but every every department has their own budget. So I mean we can talk about that later, but I just Well so in twenty twenty there was a move to put all of the printer leases, um telephone, they all were broken out into individual departments previous to 2020 they were combined into central services police uh, and angela you can correct me when i'm wrong police often has is separate there are a lot of their it related items their phone they're 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 different for security purposes so i i think that that's 
largely why, but like in City Hall, all, all of our leases have been combined. That's why that number jumped up so much. But almost all departments have these lines in them, a certain amount of dollar value in them. So I didn't, yeah, for like paper and pens and things like that. They, they were supposed to get it to if, one centralized thing, which my, my understanding also. Angela, you might be able to speak better to how this all transitioned in 2020. Sure. Um, <clears throat> just a reviewing of the central services. Um, the ones that have, like the telephone is a very good example, something very specific to their department's mission. And I believe it is only the police department and then possibly DPW has one as well. They are charged at their department level for their telephone. Um, but other departments, as you look through them, um, will all be zero on the telephone line. In terms of office expenses, in theory, everything should be centralized um, throughout the central services budget. Each department, um, when they submit their budgets, they do each have a nominal amount, um, you know, $100, $500 for things that they buy for the department that don't go through central. But in terms of electricity, telephone, unless they have a specific purpose, everything should be flowing through the central services budget. Everything I've looked at has like equipment maintenance and central services as you know, sixty thousand. We think mm -hmm. we spent ninety-two thousand this year already to date. And but every budget I reviewed has an equipment maintenance line. So I just would ask you to scrutinize that before we talk about that. I don't, I don't know if we're going to get to it tonight or not. <laughs> to see if there's any savings there. I, I hope we're not like uh, over budgeting or showing expenses twice here or something. I. It just seems like an awful lot of money to go from 98,000 to 226,000 in uh, in three years. The 98,000, uh, let me see here. Um, yeah, a lot of it is being driven by that equipment maintenance line. So I can do that for you just to give you a little bit more detail on that. So we could change the name telephone in my budget. That's just historically what it was because we used to pay for our telephone, but it's literally, again, it's, it's paying for SIMS cards for devices other than the one cell phone that we will now own. Um, but yeah, historically it was a, it was a telephone line. Us, we don't pay for our, our phones anymore out of the police budget. Um, our next line item, equipment and maintenance, is our biggest line item. Uh, we spend every penny of it. We went, and since it is my biggest line item, I've been through this time and time again with uh, my administrative aide as well with Angela. And again, I, I can't cut a penny out of it. Uh, I tried to cut out of this in 2022. Um, I was actually going to cut money out of it. And then we added our taser program, taser and body cam program. And that was an added expense of, it was 25,000 a year. It's roughly now it's 26,000 a year because um, all the equipment is leased. Um, and the beauty of it being leased is all that camera footage is not on our server. We're not responsible for all that footage. It's all on Axon's footage and um, that actually saves us money on the IT side. So even though it's 25,000, other local departments are looking uh, near the $100,000 a year mark for their body cam program. So um, that is the biggest expense out of this line item. But a lot of our IT, our, our record keeping system, our live scan system, which we're required to have to process uh, defendants comes out of here, which is four grand. Um, our officer wellness program that um, we just had a council resolution on to pay for um, this going to come out of here, which is three thousand dollars for this coming year. Um, a lot of our user fees for everything comes out of here, and then of course our vehicle repair 
and maintenance comes out of here. So uh, lots of snow tires. Uh, I'm fine here. with all these miscellaneous things. It's uh, is there any opportunity for any more Sam grants or Jay grants or? Counselor, he's going through his budget. Yeah. I, I see you have the budget. I didn't know yeah. when you were you were out. Okay. No, my my point is, that it's I you know it's not the office equipment and, yeah. and things like that that are are the real issues that we're we're so, facing. I don't think so. To get to the nuts and bolts of it, council, if I could have cut anything out of this budget, a penny, I would have, because um, what we offer to the community is service, with, which is personnel. Um, Right, you get to the basic of policing. If I could do foot patrol, it's providing the service, right? So if I could have cut anything out, I, I would have and could have. There's always grants for us to look at, and I'm constantly looking at them. I get email grants daily, but they're so um, driven to specific things, and that there's something that we're available for or we qualify for. I will always apply for that. I, um, I have no issues for doing that. Uh, we did not get the COPS grant. I don't think I've announced that to council yet. We did not get the COPS yeah, grant. That's, that's too bad. Um, in this state, NYPD got 50 officers with that grant, which is peanuts out of a 30,000 man department. Niagara, the city of Niagara got 12. Binghamton got 12. Livingston County got three. Um, NYPD's 50 officers, if you divide that to one officer for all these little PDs across the state, that would have been huge, but. It must um, not be very well funded then. I think it funded 194 officers across the country. So it wasn't a great, or sorry, 190 agencies. So not a, yeah. it wasn't a great program. Thanks for trying. Yeah, of course. And we'll try again next year. So, professional training, I'm not asking to change that budget at all, 20,000. Um, I want to, I do so want to. I got a question for yes, you sir. this page. So, this is just routine, like shooting and things. <laughs> And not to be disrespectful, but if you have, if, if, if officers leave, this doesn't include sending them to an academy. No, so academy costs um, are not part of that training budget. So how we can deal with academy costs is we provide instructors to the academy. And we provide enough instructors that our academy costs are usually a couple hundred dollars. So it's very minimal. Oh, cool. Yep. So, cool. so does that take place at SUNY Canton? Yes. Or? Yep. Or um, we've tried any Potsdam right now, and uh, that hasn't cost us anything. So Obviously, I was worried about that and being a major, like, $20,000 expense. <laughs> very good. Very yep. good. And again, I didn't mean to. Yep. No. So like <laughs> no. So that does our <laughs> routine training. It's it's know? our annual training, specialized training. There's because of course there's specialized topics that we have to keep officers right. up on. So right. yep, twenty thousand dollars is uh is our budget for this coming year. Um, I you know I get the feeling that this council is not looking to cut the police department. I truly do appreciate that. Um, but if there is cuts, I mean, just that these proposed cuts do go through. The reality of it is, is we do not have an investigations unit um, and that's the truth of the matter um, I can't schedule a night shift with what these proposed cuts are no matter if I we built eight hour schedules we built 12 hour schedules uh, no matter what I do I'm short one officer um, and I'm not going to schedule a one-man patrol um, that is just not safe. It's not safe to the officers at all. Um, that's become the director from council. It's a director from council, but um, you'll have a mass exodus of Augensburg Police Department. Yeah. I, I, I know you will. Uh, you will have no fire investigations. 
because that goes hand, hand in hand with the investigations unit. Um, same with the dive team. We've already eliminated our dive team, but I have a hard time with that. We have two rivers in our city. Um, we've invested a lot of time and training and money and equipment into our dive team. Um, I think between the police department and the fire department, we, we should have a dive team. Uh, it's a $444,000 cost for these six positions. Um, you have saved $1.1 million tonight. I would hope you could allocate $444,000 out of that $1.1 million to, yeah, to save these six positions. Um, and really, I, I don't think that you saved $444,000. Uh, I spent all night here last night. For, and I sat down and I took out the whole year schedule and I counted the overtime. Went through every day, day by day by day. Not just myself, I had the whole afternoon shift help me for a couple hours and we counted all the overtime. And then we scratched out the six positions. And then we went back out and counted the overtime again. On average, it's $19,000 extra each month in overtime, um, which comes to my notes out here, so I'm telling you the exact numbers. 313,828. Well, no. that's some other issues okay. that occur. You have so $232,000 extra in overtime. Can you say that again? Sorry, I was ready. $232,068 in overtime. Um, I'm short four hours every single day to fill a dispatch spot um, because as of right now, St. Lawrence County will not dispatch between the hours of 7 p.m. and 11 p.m., but they will agree to do it for us at 11 p.m. Um, that four hours of daily overtime has a price tag of $70,000. Mm -hmm. um, and if I could make an agreement with the union um, to allow, and it really benefits them, it hurts the city because it costs money, on days that they're scheduled their minimum staffing but allow them to use one of those vacation holiday days um, there's 240 hours for that one shift that's short that guy um, at our average overtime rate that's another eleven thousand seven hundred and sixty dollars that's where i come up with that total of three hundred thirteen thousand eight hundred twenty eight dollars so you subtract that number from that 444,000, come up with a difference of 130,517. That's truly what the city would save. Um, Just your your numbers for the 444,000. So those are the salaries, right? Without any fringe benefits. No, sir. So how I came up with those, and I conferred. Overtime. No, I, I conferred with the comptroller to get those numbers. Um, so I took the salaries, or their total salaries, you had 8%. Uh, and then I took the city's cost of, because every individual's got a different health care plan. I took their particular, what the city's cost is for the, that particular employee for health care. And that's what each of those individual employees' costs are. Does that include? The fringe benefits, uh, yes, 40% fringes on top of salary. Yeah, that's their total cost. Um, I don't, Angela, I don't think I'm missing anything. Our our younger employees are not this average $120,000 that has been rumored well, to be I'm, out I'm, there. I'm sincerely yeah. curious, if yeah, we, you know, they what that number is. Yeah, our so, so our dispatchers follow the same contract as like the DPW workers, they're CSEA um, blue collars. So the, so you got those same low numbers, and we're talking our young officers. Their salaries are low. Well, they're either single or or they're buyouts on their health care. So they're they're not they're not expensive employees. Um, hey, question. So apparently, by cutting four police officers and two dispatchers, the city saves a whopping hundred thirty thousand dollars. If we kept them, do we get the investigations unit or any of these others back? especially investigations, because the word on the street is uh, is the drugs are just running rampant without, without a, a drug detective. 
Oh, I can contest to that. I we still have informants telling our investigators that that they're they're laughing at it. There's so much fentanyl in the streets right now. They're and that they're making fun of us. He's telling me it's just exploding yeah. right now. Just crazy. You yeah. You can see it. You, you it's more prevalent now just driving up and down the street than it was three years ago, which was bad three years ago. And it's it's significantly more prevalent now today. And and you add the homeless aspect of it and the drug trade into it. it we're just, a, it's just a recipe for disaster. I believe, Council, were you provided the three options of staffing? Yep. Yep. And, so the last three pages. Okay. Yep. So with keeping it really the until we can get the county dispatch to a place, and we're about 18 months out there until they finish their upgrades, until the new infrastructure is put in place, until they can fully take us over on on day shift as well. Um, those dispatchers are crucial here. And by them filling a spot, um, it actually allows us to have three detectives. Um, and those swing shifts, dispatchers, oh, I guess I should explain, day shift one, day shift two, that's at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., night shift 7p to 7a. And those swings, I would have working the hours of 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. And that would cover that shortfall of dispatch if the county absolutely refuses to come in at 7 p.m. and dispatch for us. Um, our own personnel will cover that desk to 11 still. Um, and I still have two injured officers. They would That was who those two injured officers would be. They would be covering those swing shift off uh, spots. Uh, I have plenty of work for them to do. They'd be given all our pistol permit investigations, all our discovery obligations, um, relieving some work from our um, sergeants and patrolmen, more time on the road where they should be. So, um, and it still allows for uh, three detectives, which is more than what we had before. And part of that is from that 20th officer you gave us in uh, July. She will be counting as manpower probably the end of February. And once she's off field training, I would be able to, to allow someone to go back to investigations unit. So that's keeping the four officers and the two dispatchers. Four officers and two dispatchers. For 130 grand. Yes. Oh. And your other, I mean. Those, uh, those things you mentioned, could, uh, if you had another administrative person in your office, could they do that pistol permit discovery things, those types of things? So your pistol permits got to be done by a police officer. Um, your discovery obligations, um, everyone, uh, other agency has a police officer doing them just for the fact of your rank and file. If you're seeing an issue, if an officer is not getting uh, their discovery obligations done, um, having the authority to address that officer and saying, hey, where's your body cam footage? Where's your paperwork on this? Um, it, it just makes it easier to have that work done. Um, and I have an injured officer that can do it. I have that personnel there. I have two. Um, What's their time frame? Any idea? Uh, I, I don't know. And that's an ongoing thing that the interim city manager and I are actively working on, um, hoping to come to a resolution on both of these officers here sometime soon. <coughs> Yeah, I really think that the the issue with the, uh, the budget are, is twofold. I think it's uh, not not the police budget. I'm talking generally now. Sure. Is uh, the loss of sales tax revenue with the change from the old 30-year formula to um, preempting? That's a big part of it. But I, I I really do think that you know 
the contracts are just um I mean, you're talking 3.5 million for both departments. Now, I'm told by the the fire union president that uh, they're willing to agree to equalize monetary concessions, whatever that may mean. Um, and I, I think, I mean, what's the mechanism for that, Andrew? As you, as the manager, have those discussions? Yeah. Request would be made to open up the contract where you would sit down and, and see what you could hammer out, which isn't a bad idea. So I think that that needs to be reviewed because, I mean, let's face it, uh, um, I mean, there's a lot of expenses there and we could be doing a lot better in terms of manpower if, if those contracts weren't in place. I honestly think from a safety perspective, um, you know, the, the fire department contract, I think is either five or six people on a shift or you have to pay hazard pay and that costs us 200,000 a year. That pay for two of your officers. So I think that ought to be discussed. And, and what it says is that unless it's mutually agreed between the union and the city, so that, that contract can be changed. And I think, a four-man shift with an all call i mean you get a good response with that i'd be willing to pay a higher hazard pay if if the union went to uh, a four-man shift or clarified that it's five i i, I don't know if we're paying at six now that's get, i mean that's get, get that's cut in half at five. that's a big that's a big uh expense and healthcare with the increases that we have i i I think there's some people paying 20% toward healthcare, and I think there's others that aren't. And I think that that ought to be discussed between management and the unions that um, across the board, everybody should be paying 20%. And, and what's the value of that? And, and how many more people can we keep on? But I think that as a council, you know, management should be, um, Looking into, and I know you are, but I've mentioned a couple other things because because personnel is the the matter, and and uh, that's why those contracts, by the way, were staggered every year. So that's my that's my thoughts. It was a long term strategy. I, 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 it's not like we haven't been told what some of the concerns were going forward with, with any of the contracts and disputes and the level of trust that was levied uh, across the map. Uh, you know, there was quite a, quite a hefty fee that we paid for dropping below the uh, firefighters and, and, uh, and reducing the staff there outside the confines of the contract. And you're right, John, you know, I, I, every contract has the, the ability to re-enter. There isn't a contract on the planet that won't allow uh, any, uh, any contract and every contract says that, but there's, um, there's, there's, uh, there's issues that are going to have to be addressed and, and uh, you know, that's, We'll have to we'll have to see how that all plays out. And there there is savings there. Dan mentioned it in the last council meeting. And those savings are just, you know it's evident to bring that staffing level up to where it belongs or negotiate in some fashion if they're willing to do that. Um, That's I get the indication that they're not willing to do that because of the level of trust that that was levied uh, previously. So you know if that. That changes now with our with our new interim city manager. That's that's great. And if they're ongoing cons, con, constructive conversations, you know that's that's all better for the city of Ogdensburg and, and our financial picture and and, uh, and and our community safety and and everything involved with city operations. So we're all in it together, and it's a direct function of uh, expenses and uh, how much money. I mean, that's what well, contracts up. were pretty evident you, when, you, when you can't keep running back when you have one of the highest tax rates in the entire state of New York, the combined rate, uh, you, you can't keep running back. Otherwise, you're just going to have more and more people leaving the city. So you have to work together and, and um, 
find common ground and solutions to, that that I, yeah I mean you got to make concessions uh, um, but maybe you, know, you could reach out and see if to the to the unions and see if they'd be willing to sit down and and maybe a possible reopener if we had saved the four guys and maybe even well, we added one last year um, maybe another avenue to take because saying that they're they're burnout and there's there's no one there and there's not enough people to write tickets and they're not you're not proactive you're reactive yes sir and that's I've heard that so many times that I if we were able to open this up who knows maybe you could hire ten or even five part-time people put them in the summer put them in the places you need them send them out to the airport it's it's we're going through you I mean that that could be a possibility there's some people that would you know, retire and stay on just to do that, you know, because they can make up to X amount of dollars, which we wouldn't have all these costs. And if we're worried about not having the time, making sure we have the manpower, make sure the streets are safe and we've got the people out there fighting the drugs, maybe that's an avenue in 2022 that rather than reducing, we could kick it up because you can get two for one. Just, or maybe three for one. Just a, just a thought. I'm, just, no, I don't, a great I'm not thought. putting you on the spot. I'm no, just saying, Andrea, it's, it's maybe a that's great a, thought. That's, that's a, that's, maybe that's worth a talk. I know the only issue is the sheriff's office was trying it, and they couldn't get any part-timers. To, they had them, and they couldn't get anyone else to come back, so they but consolidated it. We won't know until we try. Yeah. So but I'm, I'm just being realistic. Take, Five or ten, it will be hard. Well, my my genuine concern is, a, is an article that came out today where the, the, the sheriff is actively pursuing and willing to take on anybody who's willing to walk away from you know a potential job right now to save their uh save their household and uh, you know it came out today which you know, is going to sure everybody to saw it and you know that there's you know no doubt but everybody in new york state as far as the law enforcement right now since the way the the governor has made it um is looking for people because people don't want to go in the field anymore and that's you can't really blame them. No. So, I mean, that's that's a big part of it. So. Well, so. I uh, formally support your your four officers and your and your two dispatchers for the extra money. I mean, anybody else here support that? For the I, I do as well, and more importantly, along with the investigative unit. Yeah, I, I'm not going to do one budget at a time and say I'm going to give this guy. You know, this department I'm not saying this. we're not saying that we just we support the chief in his endeavor as, as we as we as we proceed here through the budget process I'm just conveying to the chief that I support his endeavor so do I I, I want to see I want to see four officers and two dispatchers minimum in this budget that's me that's did we, uh did we set which departments we we are reviewing on Tuesday we we're going to talk about that tonight. Yeah. Did we do general services then, which was on tonight's, and do uh, fire or, or, or water? I'm, I'm done tonight. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's my point. I'm trying to yep. set, yeah. I'm trying to push general services on to next Tuesday. Sure. And fire, is that agreeable? Or? Sure. Yeah, a revisit to fire. So general services and fire. And then you have a DBW in there at some point. I mean, yeah. I'll see well, him. I, We've I already got. Because he's got three budgets. I think so, we're going to need to have more than two sessions. I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. We will need to have more than two sessions. Um, we were, I'm just trying to, so on the 28th, which will be our next regular council meeting, you all have a special council meeting on the 21st. We'll have a, a second budget session on the 22nd. Um, and we won't have any for the remainder of that week because it's a holiday week. Um, and we will have a regular meeting on the 28th. We could certainly do central services, government services following the meeting of the 28th, um, or we could do them on the 22nd with, with fire, do recreation and, um, and fire on the 22nd. So the 22nd, we have scheduled what right now? Nothing. But, nothing. We're oh, talking about scheduling okay. that. Recreation, not other general services. It, it can be. So let's do fire and. Uh, I mean, recreation is a bigger general, budget. It's, try and get general services in. Sorry. 
Yeah. Are we talking the 22nd? Yeah, that's already been said, right? That's yeah, what we did that last week, yeah. That's yeah, right. we're talking about the topics. Said, yeah. Okay, so two or three. Fire, general services on the 22nd. I think two is enough. Okay. Ryan, you're wrecked in. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll be remote again. Unfortunately.